What's up, tricksters and tricksetters? Watching this for the review from the second on the second YouTube channel. Today we have another tier three sub VOD review. Now, today we are reviewing Platinum Three Omen on Ascent, and uh, let's see what this guy can do a bit better, you know? Okay, hey man, Ascent and Bind are my weakest map, so let's start with Ascent. Uh, I don't know how Bind is your weakest map with Omen. Like, literally all the way up to Immortal 3, you can easily carry with Omen on Bind if you're using every single setup that I've shared in my ranked playbook on, on Discord server. Like, literally, just use every setup, you're done. Like, like, you know, I, I don't know how Bind is your weakest map if you're already meaning Omen. This game, the team wasn't vibing and the Cypher was low-key crazy. How do I deal with teammates that refuse to work with me? Basically, like, uh, you know, when teammates don't want to play with you, <coughs> you need to adapt to them, and uh, that's it. Like, usually on, on a defender side, you need to decide whether or not your teammates are good and bad. You know, are they dying first, are they, like, uh, selling their early kills, early blood, etc, etc. And you need to compensate these stupid mistakes that they're making. If you're playing Omen, like, you know, give them the one-way smokes, give them the paranoia, compensate every little shit that, that they do. And on the attacker side, you will have four types of teammates with yourself. Good and bad, passive and aggressive. Depending what type of teammates you have, depends how you want to play the game. For an example, if you have passive teammates that are bad and, you know, dying in some solo 1v1 fights, you just need to decide, like, uh, is the team play even possible? And is there anything that you can do solo to make the numbers advantage, punish the enemies before they punish your teammates and win that specific round? Now, uh, when teammates are not working with you, adaptiveness is the key. You basically need to learn how to adapt to every type of teammates that you get with yourself, especially in the lobbies such as Platinum, Diamond, Ascendant, Low Immortal. Like, you never know with what type of an idiot you're playing the game, and thus your map awareness should also be high. Like, essentially, in a game of Valorant, you're not only reading the enemies, and you're not only focusing on yourself, you need to focus on what the fuck your stupid teammates are doing, because... 90% of games you're gonna play with some mentally retarded idiots and you will need to compensate their mistakes. When teammates are refusing to play with you, you play with them, stick to the allies that you think have the highest chances of dying, teammates that uh, are carrying the spike, uh, teammates that are doing something useful for you that you can use to potentially win that specific round. On the, atta the attack was uh, as passive as if we were still on defense. They did crazy shit plays and didn't want to listen. I think I should have pushed more aggressively and told them to follow me, but while being in that game, I kind of felt like they wouldn't follow me anyways. I lost my temper a few times since the team was that passive and unwilling to change the approach. Just know that I'm normally a super chill person. Okay, no problem. Listen. Uh, so, basically, uh, if your teammates are passive and bad on a defender side, like, you have a few options that you can do. Option number one. Just to open the Bella plant. So, option number one. When your teammates are passive and bad. You focus on yourself. Uh, so basically like, uh, you know, focus more on, on what the enemies are doing and what you can you do to basically fuck up the enemies, make some early kill before your teammates die. Essentially, when your teammates are passive and bad, the team play doesn't exist anymore, you know. So number one thing that you can do, focus on what the enemies are doing. Is there anything that you can put anywhere where you can actually punish the enemies, make some early kills and do something alone? That's where you need to like take more 50-50 fights, do some kind of a crazy outplay, I don't know, like uh, try to open the site yourself at the end of the day, if that passive approach is al already not working. If the passive approach is working, so basically, like, uh, we're playing passively, and you're winning more rounds than what you're losing, then just adapt to your allies. You know, hold the angles, play as slow as they want to play, and win the match. End of the story. And if uh, you're not confident in your solo plays, then uh, I heavily recommend you to just focus on, you know, who has the highest chances of dying first, and who's gonna die first at this moment of time. So basically, like, uh, you know, if, uh, I don't know, we're playing default on Ascent. One teammate is, uh, 
I don't know, B main, one is uh, A main, and two teammates are mid. If you think that two teammates are mid have the highest chances of dying, carry the spike with yourself, and try to refrag them, try to bait the shit out of them, try to do something with their life. And generally speaking, when your teammates are passive and bad, I will always try to keep the spike somewhere close to myself. You don't need to, you know, carry it into the enemy lines if you're doing something alone. But make sure that, you know, you're not playing a retake of the spike game. That, 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 that's the worst shit that can happen for you. Like, I don't know, your teammate in B-Man alone is carrying the spike, he dies, what then? You know, the round is becoming like 10 times harder than uh, it should actually be. Now, a post plan positioning, especially on A, are not my strong side. I explain every single post plan setup with Omen in my rank playbook on Ascent. Just watch that. Problem fixed. Following with, following through with smart outplays on retake are also my not, not strong side. Okay, we'll see in, 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 in the what review. How do I keep my mental up when I feel like it's going downhill? You know, you, you know like, basically 40% of matches in Valorant you're not gonna lose because you did something wrong. Like, this game is a huge gamble. Anyways, there's like 60% of matches and rounds and engagements that you can actually impact. If you're in one of these, you know, 40% of games where, I don't know, some RNG shits are happening to you, like random bullets are ki ki killing you through the smokes, uh, enemies are just, you know, it's a complete team diff. Fuck it, play the best you can, get as many kills as possible, get as many rounds as possible to preserve your MMR and, uh, you know, to keep your account in a safe place, like never surrender a single match, like whatever, even if it is like 13-0, it is better to play the whole match from beginning to the end. Now, uh, keeping your mental up, you know, that's why you should never play like, uh, uh, first of all, you, you should never play a lot of games in a row. That's the number one mistake you can make in development that I'm making right now. Essentially, like, if you can keep a good mental for like two or three games, play two, two or three games per day, and that's it. Like I never play Valorant when you're not focused, when you're not ready to perform, when, you, when you're not mentally ready for all of the retarded shit that can happen in this game. Like, the worst thing you can do is, you know, queue match after match after match, done. Only if you don't give a shit about your account and, and about the grind, you should be doing something like that. Generally speaking, across the day, it's really good if you... Uh, if you split your games in multiple gaming sessions, like if you have like time to play nine games of Valorant per day, play two games, you know, in morning, three games in the evening, three games later, two games late, like you get a point. Now, <clears throat> if the match is going downhill, when it comes to mentality, like there are some outside things that can also help you out. Like for example, like I'm consistently drinking something, chewing onto something to keep myself focused. Essentially, you know, the games that you lose should never impact your mentality in a negative way. Like, I, I, I can lose 10 matches in a row. I don't give a shit. Like, like every single match I start, okay, let's win this one. We lose that match. Never mind. We'll, we'll win the next one, etc. <coughs> etc. Anyways, mentality is something that you build up as you're playing the game. You know, like, especially when you reach, like, Radiant and high low lobbies, like, uh, you won't give that much shit about... Uh, the previous games, uh, simply because you, you, you will become numb to, to defeat, and, uh, you know, it just gets better over time. Also, when it comes to mentality so, and overall attitude in the game, uh, what can help you out is, like, uh, you know, keeping yourself mentally in check and physically in check outside uh, of the game. So, basically, like, uh, you know... Uh, Going to the gym, like, uh, taking care of yourself is very important. If you're just a fat fuck, uh, you know, in a basement of your parents and you're doing nothing with your life, of course your mentality is gonna be bad in the game as well. Uh, and uh, essentially, like, uh, you know, if the game is going downhill, try to focus more on what you can do to make it better. If the game is really unwinnable, just focus on solo plays, get as many fucking rounds as possible, as many kills as possible, and be done with it. Now, I feel that I should take more risks, especially in games like these, but I fail to see the right opportunities, even though I watched all the playbook videos and made stress to look up. Uh, it's kind of impossible that you watched every video, 
because there's shit tons of them and it is impossible that you implemented everything in such a short uh, run essentially the best the best times for you to take the risky place is uh, in the first round on attacker side with like okay let's let's talk about that when should you be aggressive with omen let's focus on omen because it's omen what review number one uh playing every time you play the first round on attacker's side so basically every time you're playing the first round on the on the attacker side you should go for some aggro outplay it doesn't need to be too risky you, you know you should not go for 50 50 outplays but for an example like uh, if you're playing ascent and you're doing this type of a default setup teleport here you know as your jet is dashing out try to support her like in the first round in all of the lobbies below immortal tree you should never trust your teammates to open the site for you you don't know with who the fuck you're playing and uh, essentially like uh, it's better if you take the things in your own control second time when you should take more risk is whenever you're playing some kind some kind of an eco or hull by round these rounds are kind of you know hard by default and essentially whenever you're playing some kind of an eco hull by round with a shorty with a stinger bonus rounds etc etc go for some aggro outlets you know try to open up the the site for your teammates uh, try to trade yourself for as many kills as possible on both attackers and defender side and that is when you should be doing you know some of these uh crazy strategies and tactics now uh whenever your teammates are bad, aggressive, or passive, and bad on attacker's side. So if your teammates are aggressive but bad on the attacker's side, so basically you have a jet that is just dashing in, dying instantly, shit like that, you're always using your utility in a way where you semi-support your teammates and you support some kind of an aggressive play of yours. If she's already going in and dying uh, like an idiot, you know, <laughs> what the fuck is she gonna do? Like, you know, like oh, try to open the site yourself for your team, lead the rest of your team into the site, and that's it. Sorry, guys, my neck hurts fucking a lot. Uh, if your teammates are passive and bad, I've already explained, you know, what you should be doing, and then you can try to go for more riskier fights and risky shit. Now, number four. Uh, whenever your teammates are oh, on, on a defender side, whenever your teammates on defenders defender side are bad, you can take more. You can make more risky plays. It's totally fine. You know, like uh, if your teammates are already selling the first blood everywhere, like uh, you can try to outplay the enemies with some kind of a play, I don't know, flank, lurk, strategy, tactic, whatever the fuck you want to do. Uh, and uh, whenever you are in the true numbers this advantage, you need to go for some risky place. What is the true numbers disadvantage? Uh, basically like, uh, okay, let's, let's discuss this here, just a second. Uh, what is the true numbers disadvantage? This advantage. So you are playing uh, uh, 5v1, 5v2, I mean 1v5, 2v5, 3v5, uh, 1v4, 2v4, 3v4, mm, 1v3, 2v3, and one way to. So basically, if these numbers are present in the game, you can go for some aggressive plays and uh, more risky plays basically to even out the numbers and try to fuck up the enemies with some kind of an outplay. Uh, other than that, you know, th th that's uh, every single... Uh, <clears throat> what sport you do, you, lo you, you look also not very healthy. My sport is fucking coaching players in Valorant. You know, for the last four years, actually three and a half years, I've been doing six to nine hours of coaching every fucking day. And uh, 
basically, when you work that much, you're making, you like, content creation and uh, coaching is the last fucking job that you should do on Earth. Like, nobody should strive to be a content creator, un unless you're in top 1%. One per one like, you're working overtime, 24-7, you don't have a time for family, for friends, nothing. Literally. Like, uh, I cannot wait for some other game to come out, so I can start making content and take a different approach, but currently I'm living from coaching, so unfortunately I need to do that. Now, uh, 1v5, 2v5, 3v5, 1v2, 2v4, uh, 3v4, 1v3, 2v3, yeah, th th that's good, that's good. If this is not the case scenario, you can play Omen more as a support and try to basically, like, uh, you know, try to, like, uh, support your allies, you don't need to go for some risky place, etc, etc. Now, uh, what is the next question? No questions, we're good. Okay, let's let's see the tracker. Basically, he sent two trackers. This is the main account. This is the second account. Uh, the reason why I'm looking at the second account to see your playtime. Uh, essentially, you know, all the way up to Immortal 3, this playtime is okay. But generally, what I advise to the players, if you truly want to improve at Valorant and reach higher ranks and actually, you know, improve faster, you need to play, like, three games per day. Three games per day is, like, uh, optimal, the lowest amount of games, uh, and uh, essentially, you know, it's, uh, what, you know, if you want to keep up with these kids, uh, with these, uh, like, uh, aim demons, etc, uh, etc, et if you're not playing three games of element per day, you cannot expect some kind of a fast improvement. Like, three games minimum, plus some kind of a warm-up, you know, aim training, plus... Uh, what reviews or some training like basically you need to invest like i don't know three to four hours per day if you want to see faster and significant improvement in the game otherwise your grind is gonna look like this very inconsistent you know a bit slower etc etc now let's see this act this act not bad to be honest 52 percent win rate headshot is okay for platinum player you know whatever, KD above 1, 131 damage per round, one thing that I always observe is KST, this is, this is okay, you know, it's not terrible, if you have KST below 70%, uh, that is, you know, really bad, but what you're really aiming for is 75%, when your KST is, you know, between 70 and 75, that means that you can improve your team play a bit more, you can improve, like, uh, uh, I don't know, like, uh, the f deaths that you take, like, you, you know, you, you don't need, maybe you don't need to take that many aggressive fights. Yo, I'm ridiculous, thank you for the sub. What the fuck? So, you don't need to take some stupid fights, maybe, like, uh, you, you can take a smarter approach to the game. Now, other statistics. It's fine, except the clutch percentage. Like basically, when the clutch percentage is below like five percent, that's also also bad. Uh, so you're meaning omen oh, only respect. Okay, and what are you playing on breeze? No, my my what? My man is a uh... my man is a giga chat, bro. He's, he's playing Omen on Breeze with 66% win rate and 146 ADR. Let me see a Breeze matches. We have a Viper. Interesting. Listen, generally speaking, you know, team composition in Valorant in rank solo queue, don't matter that much. Like, yeah, you can you can literally lose the match against... You can win a match with, like, with five duelists, or four duelists and one controller, it really uh, doesn't matter. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, if, if the Omen is working somehow for you on Breeze, you can keep playing him. Anyways, next week I'm gonna do, like, the full guide for Omen on Breeze and Icebox as well. Like, uh, that can maybe even help you out even more. If this is working for you, somehow keep doing it. Generally speaking, you know, playing without Viper on Breeze is uh, 
hell of a time. And it is definitely one agent that you should try to learn, at least on that map. On Icebox, <clears throat> all the way up to, like, uh, Immortal 3, I would definitely play only Omen. Like, Omen on Icebox has so many strategies, so many tactics, so many good one-way smoke setups, uh, setups to stop the enemies, push out, play the enemies, etc, etc. So, you know, after Immortal 3, you're, you're good to go with Omen. After Immortal 3, like, maybe you should once again switch to Viper. On Breeze, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, uh, if Omen is working for you, keep using him, why not, etc, etc. But one huge problem. H how the fuck is Breeze better map for you than Bind? Like, Omen on Bind? Like, up to Immortal 3, like... Is it? What the fuck? Like, what do you submit? I mean, Ascent is your weakest map, to be honest, but... What? Come on. You know? Chill, chill. Weapons... This is another thing, like, listen. <clears throat> In pistol rounds... You need to start implementing some better strategies and tactics. Like, in pistol rounds, should be on the same level as the full-by rounds for you. And you should learn how to play them better, like, because this is terrible. I mean, in the lobbies below Immortal 3, like, if you win the pistol round on both attackers, defender side, you win the second antique round, the match is already over uh, to some degree. Now, I don't know what you're doing in the pistol rounds, we're gonna see in the VOD, but, uh, bro, this is like, you know, come on. Aha, uh -huh, you're using fre- come on. Listen, fuck the Frenzy. Like, literally, Frenzy, right now, is uh, abomination of a weapon, like, uh, with, with Omen. On 90% of the maps, you're always going with a classic, light shield, and utility. Like, why would you play Frenzy, bro? Like, the weapon is nerfed to the ground. Most of the times, like, when you buy a classic with a light shield, one of your teammates is gonna die somewhere, you're gonna pick a ghost anyways, or maybe even a sheriff. Fuck the frenzy. You know, light shield, classic, utility, that's it. On Breeze, of course, like, you know, you need to go with a ghost or sheriff on, on Icebox. Also, depending what type of a play you wanna do. But, uh, actually, like, top three weapons for him are, like, frenzy, ghost, and, and, and classic. What? Hello? Okay, listen. <clears throat> try to diversify the weapons that you're using in the game. You know, try to expand yourself as a player a bit more. You're playing Vandal way too much. Like in the Elo Below Immortal 3. Essentially, like, uh, this is not how your tracker should look like. Like, Learn how to play op. Even if you're playing Omen, bro, like on, on, on Breeze. Icebox. Operator is a free elo stick. Number one. Number two, Outlaw. Currently, maybe the best anti-eco weapon and bonus round weapon on 90% of the maps on the defender side. Shorty should be your primary secondary weapon if you're already playing Omen. It is so easy to trade yourself for some easy kills through the smokes, uh, easy kills in the choke points, like... Uh, up to Immortal 3, you need to become more versatile. Stinger is there, Bulldog is there, Vandal is there, but... You know, try to bring the shorty a bit higher. Outlaw. Pick up, Operator, Marshal, like... Come on, you know? Like, the map that you're playing dictates which weapons you want to play and what you want to abuse on that map. Like, going up to Immortal 3, like, literally... Operator and Outlaw are such an easy weapons for some easy kills, like, uh, because usually, players' utility usage, pathing, the way that they approach the sites, and generally, like, how they position on the defender's side, is mega bad. Like, they will not use a proper drone, a proper dart, uh, maybe they will not use anything, like, uh, to execute a site. Learn how to hold the angles, done. Are you only playing Omen? Hey, you played a bit of Viper before. What was your win rate with Viper?
nothing, I guess. Like, he, he played a long time ago. Hmm. Episode 7, Act 2. And where do you play the Viper? Here you're playing Gecko, Neon, and Kill Killjoy on Breeze. My man is great. He played Viper on Ascent. In Platinum. I respect, man. I don't know. I really feel that beside the Omen, you should already start learning, like, uh, Viper on Breeze, if you already want to play controllers. It, it, it's purely a magic. I don't know, like, you know, that, that, that you have this high win rate on Breeze with Omen. My dude is a magician. Is there any recent Breeze game? Mm -hmm. He had a wiper here. Okay, I mean, like, listen. If you already have Viper with yourself, you you can play Omen in this silo, like, and probably carry the match, like, uh, there are some really good one-way smokes, uh, there's a lot of elevated positions that you can abuse, uh, a lot of aggressive plays to enter the site, so this is this is fine. You know, you can, you can definitely play him as a secondary controller, but he, playing him as a solo controller, I don't know how much success you're gonna find. Okay. Ascent. Interesting. Yeah. Let's go. I don't think you have the right to give out or tell someone how to play. Bro, I got Radiant 20 times in this game. I've completed, like, uh, Initiators to Immortal, Controllers to... Im uh, pardon, Initiators to Radiant, Controllers to Radiant, Sentinels to Radiant, Duelists to Radiant. I played Solo Queue for the last four years. I mained, like, 10 different fucking agents. I coached 4,000 players in Valorant. From these 4,000 players, 95% uh, of them reached their goals. Some players became semi-pro players, such as... Actually, he's not playing right now. So, you know. It's it's all good, bro. All good. I'm just fed up with this game, bro. I, I don't enjoy playing Valorant a single bit. Defender side. Listen. So... Ascent. That's a lot. Listen, on Ascent, this is how you look at the map. So Ascent, number one, is a fast rotation map. So basically on this map, you should try to value, uh, on a defender side, numbers a bit more. Try to compensate every single mistake that your teammates are doing. And try to be there for every single duel that your teammates are taking. Generally speaking, A set and B set control should not be your primary concerns. If your teammates are fighting somewhere, try to support them as soon as possible. You can play a 5v5 retake at any moment of time. But the amount of mistakes that your teammates can make on this map, you know, solo picking short, solo picking bottom mid, solo picking A main, solo picking B main, is enormous. On this map, your default site is the A site. Now, once again, what is the default site for you in Valorant? Default site is a site that is easier for the attack, harder for, for defense, easier for the re uh, easier for the post plant, harder for retake. Essentially, because of the map design and map layout, that is the bomb site that uh, is essentially harder for defender side players. Default site is the site that you play every single time when you have no idea where the enemies are going to go and you have no ideas what the enemies are going to do, essentially. Now, uh... In the first round, on a defender side of Ascent, you always want to play around the A site. And to start on the A side with some kind of a setup or strategy. Now, beside that, 
On this map, it is really important for you to always keep the market and short control in check. Essentially, on this map, you need to value market control and short control over the A site and B site. Like, you should never allow yourself to be pinched by the enemies and to be fucked from multiple different angles by some kind of a lurks, flanks, shit like that. And you need to play a semi-aggressive playstyle where you're consistently putting some kind of a pressure onto the enemies in A main, B main, and mid area of the map. Now, with Omen, one benefit of playing Omen in ranked solo queue is like, uh, even if you're putting, let's say you're playing B site, if you notice that your teammates are being aggro in A main, give them the one way smoke. You know, it's better for you to compensate their mistakes with that one way and to stop the enemy's push rather than, you know, letting them lose the life, lose the sight, etc. etc. Now, in the first round of Ascent, there's an enormous amount of things that you can do with Omen. Like, you can play a classic pistol shorty strategy here, which is my favorite, and just do a cubby position smoke like this. Fuck up the enemies through the smoke, bop bop, pick a classic, outplay the enemies, easy kills. All the way up to Immortal 3, like, muy bien. Now, second thing, we can fight aggressively for the aim and with a one-way smoke and try to... If your teammates want to communicate, of course, and they want to play with you. Third thing, you can play some double base setup, like tell one of your teammates to bait for you. You can play a shorty here, try to fuck up the enemies. Fourth thing, you can play passively with some kind of a one-way smoke. Once again, stop the enemies push and try to delay them. It's really up to you. My personal favorite thing to do on this map is classic pistol shorty here, taking easy kills. And that's it. If the enemies are pushing B, no problem, just take the classic, close the doors, destroy the doors, do the smoke for the B main, and connect with your teammates onto the B site. Uh, listen, uh, in the first round of uh, Ascent, always try to start on the A site. Like, A site is hell of a time for retake, because we cannot divide it in uh, singular sectors and singular positions and essentially like a site is hell of a time for especially in the first round if your teammates lose the a site it's a huge gamble and only god knows if uh, you'll be able to essentially retake the site successfully play the a site and bro playing frenzy man like i i i, I don't know like currently it's, it's a very weak weapon very low amount of players is using the frenzy for a good reason, if you're already playing Omen, you know, on a defender side, classic light shield, two smokes, two shrouded steps, classic light shield, one shrouded step, shorty, and you're playing classic pistol shorty strategy, uh, classic light shield, shorty, utility, it's really up to you. Depends on the map that you're playing. On Breeze, obviously, you're going with a Sherry 4, with a Ghost, on Icebox, it's really up to you. But on Ascent, playing Frenzy, I don't know. What weapon is kind of shit. It's better to have a light shield with a classic done. Now, if we're already playing B set in the first round, I would quite literally do the same uh, thing that we've done on the A site. I would just play a classic pistol shorty strategy here. Drop the classic. Enemies are pushing in. Drop this type of a smoke. Stand in the smoke. Dodge the enemy's utility. Random spam. Dodge the enemy's recon utility. Fuck up one enemy for an easy kill. You can do go for some kind of an outplay or you can simply reposition all the way back and play safe. You try? Someone's okay, listen. No matter with which map you're playing in Valorant, uh, in the first round, on the Fender's side, the absolutely best gamble is to instantly rotate on the position where your team has already made a contact with the enemies. Essentially, majority of the callouts in the first round on the attacker side are Hey guys, let's push something S5. You know, let's push A S5, let's execute B, etc. It's always gonna be some kind of an execute. Like, not always, but 80 to 90% of the times. And on the first contact between enemies and your teammates, you can start some kind of a slow rotation, unless your teammates are completely stopping the enemy's push and dealing the enemies for days. Or maybe fucking up the enemies completely. Here, your Phoenix is very low HP. They already make a, made a contact with the enemies on A site. You should be doing a main smoke, you know, default smoke to stop uh, the enemies push, basically deep into the aim and position. And you should already be in the CT and get ready to rotate if the enemies are committing to the site. I'm coming in. Almost to be. Okay, second thing. 
even if you have the information that enemies are pushing somewhere. I know that in this example, like, you know, KO did a knife re reveal that enemies are not B main. Always place your crosser on the most probable angle from which enemies can kill you at that moment of time. Essentially, right now, you know, maybe, I don't know, enemy killed you, lurk through the B main, etc, etc. Like, your rotations should never look like this. Place your crosser, you know, towards the B main area of the map and do this. Three benefits. First benefit, if the enemy peeks you, ca catches you off guard, at least you're ready for the fight. Second benefit is you're not gonna get ba backstabbed. You're not gonna get fucked from the ass. Third benefit is maybe as you're doing this, you will see the pixel of an enemy that is taking that position. Maybe that enemy will think, aha, he didn't see me. I can maybe take the beast for free. And then you can surprise that enemy. Don't lose the information, don't get backstabbed, don't get fucked by the enemies in the ass. Keep your crosser where the enemies can be at that moment of time. And generally this should be a habit for you, even if uh, you have 100% information that enemies are A, develop this habit is gonna be very very useful for you in the long run, instead of just, you know, rotating like a monkey looking at the ground, etc, etc. One mid, oh, oh, he's, he's crossing mid now. Now, listen. You should have smoked a man long time ago, like as, as soon as the phoenix dropped like to low HP You should have deployed a smoke for the a main Because like uh, right now only God knows How Cypher is, what type of a duel Cypher is gonna pick What type of a duel Jet is gonna pick And of course at this moment of time When you know, when you know that Killjoy is lurking mid You should be doing the one way smoke on the A short to support your phoenix as well, because your phoenix is very low HP, he can die easily, and you should be doing this smoke on top of the lamp right here. Now, in this situation here, I wouldn't rotate yet. I would just support my teammates with a one-way smoke, with a default smoke up there, done. But, I would chill in the CT. We don't have a single utility to cover this, to cover that. Maybe enemies are gonna stop their push, maybe they will start rotating. And I would anchor my position a bit longer. Just to see what the enemies are gonna do and are they gonna commit to the push. Anyways, like, you know, you have the smokes to support your allies. End of the story. Shit. Enemy spotted A. I'm stunned. Not pushed out, not pushed out yet. Enemy spotted A. Listen, like, you, you need to be faster with your smokes. Like, especially in these lo lower elo lobbies, like, you know, Platinum, gold, I don't know, like, medium, elo, like, ascendant, diamond, etc, etc. Like, you should be supporting your teammates with a smoke a bit faster. Like, especially here, when you saw that, you know, Jet is already at the choke point, peeking your teammates from the aim in, do the smokes, you know, split the enemies apart, maybe that smoke will allow your teammates to kill the Jet, then kill the rest of the enemies that are coming out, etc, etc. Like, this is terrible. Shit. Enemy spotted A. I'm stunned. I, I, don't, I don't know why you didn't do this smoke. Not pushed out, not pushed out yet. Enemy spotted A. Now they're going out. 50 on Brimstone. One enemy remaining. Mid, mid, mid. Yeah, it's just me, it's just me. Just watch heaven. Okay, listen. Since we know that the Killjoy was short and mid a long time ago. I mean, not long time ago. It, it was like 10 seconds, essentially. Uh... Whenever you're in this type of a scenario, where one of your teammates is isolated, and he can die alone, play with that teammate. If you already have the numbers advantage, and you notice that your teammates are not playing a proper refray game. Right now, you should be playing with Jet on the rafters, and just watching the rafters. Like your Cypher and Phoenix can watch a main, we have the spy control, all four of us can play on the refray game, and play like a normal human beings. So essentially, Right now, there's no reason for you to chill on the site. I mean, anyways, we're gonna probably win this round easily. But, you know, there's no reason for Killjoy to build up her ultimate. Okay. Now listen. Uh, when you win the first round on Ascent, <clears throat> in the second round, you have, I don't know, three buy options, essentially. You can go with a Stinger and Heavy Shield. Totally fine. You can go with an Outlaw and Light Shield and Utility. Or you can go with a Heavy Shield and uh, Judge. I, I mean, Bulldog is, theoretically speaking, one of the best anti-eco weapons, but on Ascent, I really feel that 
uh, with Outlaw, you can take some easy kills. Like, even with Killjoy, I'm playing Outlaw and Ascent, like you will see in, in, in the games that I play, like, uh, a few days ago, I played, like, with a, with a Chronicle and, and some pro players against them. Like, I don't know. Outlaw is really stupid weapon right now for antique rounds, for bonus rounds. Like, you just go for the body shots. Uh, if the enemies are following the light shield meta, they are dead. You don't even, you don't even need to aim with that weapon. You can take two easy kills like this. If you don't really like the Outlaw that much, you can go with a Stinger, you can go with a Judge. Bulldog is also fine. I personally prefer the Stinger just to save my economy. Anyway, Stinger, Stinger is amazing. Bonus round weapon as well. So, it's really up to you. Now, in the first round, enemies went A. And, essentially, uh, in the second round, I would once again play the A site. We still don't know, like, uh, what type of pattern enemies are abusing. You know, how they're gonna go. Are they gonna abuse the ABAB pattern? Are they following the rule of fear? Like, right now, what I would do, if I was playing instead of you, I would just pick up the outlaw, peek from the short off angle here, try to find some kills in the tiles, and I would be defending aiming, short, and playing a fast rotation through the CT to support my teammates on the B side. I mean, your Cypher should also be changing his setups, anyways. But even if Cypher is on A, you should be on the A side in this round. Like, generally speaking, the first two rounds on Ascend, you want to gamble on A side, because 60 to 70% of times on Ascend, players love to push A in the first round, because, you know, they think, you know, Cypher is B, so by SB, they're gonna spam us, fuck us up with utility, etc, etc. And the second round as well, I want to get, I love to gamble on A side because it is your default site. We don't want to lose it. We want to keep the Guardian control and A control in check. And then from the third round, you should be switching your positions towards the mid, market, B site, and the rest of the map, depending, you know, what type of a pattern enemies are using to push. This is, I, I don't know, this is the worst thing you can do in Valorant. Like, if you already win the first round, first thing that you should have in that anti-eco second round is a heavy shield. You know, like, you don't want the enemies to kill you with a one-tap from the sh with a sheriff. You don't want the enemies to kill you with the fucking marshal, like, you know, in the body. Like, shield is a must. Second thing, you're forcing some kind of a gun. If you already don't have a sheriff with yourself, buy the stinger, buy the... buy anything, bro. Literally anything. And then you're investing the rest of the credits in utility. Like, you didn't win the first round to lose the second round. Then in the third round, we can play a bonus. We have a very high chances of winning that round. End of the story. But same with the frenzy and just buying utility. Come on, man. Like, you know, wh wh why did we win the first round? Yeah. True, but yeah. Seen nothing yet. Apple. Bit so. Okay. I'm rich. Reloading. He crossed the show. He crossed the show. Shadows traveling. Here, for an example, like instead of chilling in your shadow form, as, uh, listen. Every time you're playing some kind of an antique around in Valorant. So, just a second. Let, let, let's write that down. So. An, uh, anti... Uh, whenever enemies are playing some kind of a bonus, eco, or half buy round. Focus mainly on uh, preserving the numbers focus on preserving any mistake that your teammates might make during that round don't showcase enemies your best strategies and tactics for that specific map unless it's necessary for you. I don't know if that's how you write necessary. Uh, try to win this round in the most boring way possible and by abusing some default setup. So essentially, like, you know, in when the enemies are bonus, eco or halbi, 
you, you don't give a fuck about the map control. Generally speaking, of course, you should still, like, you know, anchor the positions, like, don't give the enemies bonuses for free. But, in this scenario, where your jet already pushed beam and area of the map, he has the information that enemies are not here. Your KO got a contact with the enemies at the bottom mid. You should be rotating towards the market, trying to play with your KO, and you should be ready to smoke your teammates on a short with a one way, and in the main with the default smoke if the enemies decide to go towards the A side. Anyways, the best gamble, as I said, in the first two rounds of Ascent on a defender side is to focus on playing around the A side. A side, A short is the best gamble. And then from the third round, you're playing like, you know, depending where the fuck enemies are going, what type of a playstyle they're abusing, you know, think, yeah. what type uh of a style pattern of pushing they're using. So here, for example, you know, when your Cypher actually got the info on the camera, you should have rotated towards the market in order to play with your KO. Leave the jet alone, she already took the space in the beam and, you know, she's holding it with the outlaw enemy. She's probably gonna get some kills with the body shots. I'm mid. And you don't need to... He crossed the shore, he crossed the shore. Reach Short. Oh, there's two, three rushing guard. You know, th this type of thing should not be happening for you. Like, uh, literally, when the enemies are equal held by, try to value the numbers and just play faster rotations. Like, you need to compensate these type of stupid mistakes from your teammates. And now a huge problem is, like, we have a stupid frenzy without a shield. For this round. Going heaven, going heaven. One, two, two, two. Two heaven, two heaven, two heaven on A. This, what the fuck? The Bruce was in the corner. Enemy spotted mid. Both on A, both on A. Spectrum, both on a. my buddy. Spectrum, One my buddy. One enemy man. remaining. Enemy, I'm low. Yes, he yeah, he's spectre. Just wait. You're blind, you're blind. Blinded. Spike planted. Okay, I mean, you could you could have played this a bit better, like, you know, Phoenix should not be the one that is actually back backseat coaching you right now. Like, you know, in this scenario, I'm low. Yes, where, where you yeah, already know that th this one enemy is below you planting the spike. I mean, th this would have been 10 times easier if you had a stinger or heavy shield, etc. It, it would be less risky, essentially. So here, in this specific round, Breach is planting the spike. You have all of your utility, paranoia, everything to outplay that breach. Like, th there's no reason to play, you know, passively and wait for the jet. Anyway, the jet is like 10 HP. Maybe it's a smart move, but literally, just flash this guy, get on top of the gen, kill him, that's it. And once again, if you're in this type of a 1v1 fight, enemies around the generator, you know exactly his position. Like, Instead of dropping down, like this, and getting that fight, you should always jump on top of the generator, and from this position, try to fuck him up. Instead of dropping down, enemy is nearsighted, he can still see you here, and potentially kill you. And you're blind. I mean, that, that, that was a really good call by the Phoenix, but Phoenix should not be the one backseat coaching you, you should be the one making these decisions by yourself. I Go. Sure. Anyways, in this round, you could have played a bit faster rotation, respected the numbers a bit more, and respect respected the economy advantage that you have over the enemies. Now, in this round, this is the round where the things can get interesting, essentially. So, enemies for two rounds in a row try to push onto the A site, and they failed miserably. So, this is the round where we can already try to apply the rule of fear. To predict the enemies. Rule of fear, like I explained enormous amount of times, and essentially it is a good gamble to use in the earlier stages of the game to read the enemies and how they're gonna push and what they're gonna push. So we already, you know, got, uh, we were correct two times in a row that enemies are gonna push A. Now in this round, playing B set is totally fine. Obviously. And in this round, we can try to outplay the enemies with some kind of a cubby position smoke. We can keep the full B main control with a one way smoke in the B main and try to fuck up the enemy's push completely. Uh, and essentially, you know, 
because the enemies lost two rounds on A. Now chances are around, I would say like around 60 or 70 percent that the enemies are going to push us towards the B side and towards the mid, and around like ah, 30 to 40 percent that is going to be some kind of a A push. These type of gambles you need to take in Valorant, especially in the low elo and medium elo lobbies. And in the first four rounds, your teammate should not be the one dictating the out outcome of your rounds. Like, you should never be filling in the positions, uh, uh, playing something because you're playing some kind of an agent uh, that is good on a specific site, etc, etc. Try to counter the enemies, try to predict the enemies, follow the rules for a specific map, follow the chances, essentially, you know, evalu evaluate the chances of something happening in a game, and that's it. So, here playing the B side, solid, probably enemies are gonna hit us on B. Okay. Suppressing. And they are hitting us in the B. Uh, I mean, here, obviously, you know, because your jet is holding the B main with the outlaw, like, uh, we cannot do the... I mean, you can do a one-way smoke and help her out and keep the full B main control, but God knows how she's gonna use that one way. But, while your jet was holding this B main angle. This is the round where you can do some kind of a risky play. You know, enemies don't have a recon initiator. So enemies don't have a Sova, they don't have a sky, na nothing. They only have the stuns, flashes, and that's it. So this is the scenario where you can go for some kind of a risky play and try to do something that you generally wouldn't do, you know, when enemies are eco or halby. Like in a bonus rounds, you can go for this type of play. So, if my jet, in a bonus round, is holding this with the outlaw, I can use that jet as a bait. I mean, she can bait for me. And you can sneak inside of this corner. In the meantime, use the one-way smoke as well. If the enemies kill their jet and they pass the one-way smoke, you can use a paranoia, fuck up the enemies, take like maybe one, two easy kills, teleport away with the shrouded steps, done. Like, these are exactly the rounds where, you know, you don't need to play in a default way. Play passively, you know, just support your allies, etc, etc. Like, try to, like, every single opportunity like this, you should take in Valorant, in those low elo and medium elo lobbies. Like, if your jet is already holding that for you, you're playing with a Spectre against the enemies that have the Vandals and fan uh, Phantoms. Perfect moment of time. Okay. Ah, sorry. Suppressing. Yeah, yeah. Listen. Now, when you're creating this cubby position smokes, like, uh, so basically, for the B main area of the map, on ascent, you have three smokes, essentially, four smokes. So, this is the smoke, default smoke, to stop and to delay the enemy's push. Another default smoke to stop and to delay the enemy's push is a one way smoke here on top of the lamp. That we can use to stop the enemies and fuck them up from the CT, from the, you know, like, speedway, etc, etc. Now, if you want to use some kind of a smoke to outplay the enemies, yes, we are using the cubby position smoke, like this. But you need to make a cubby a bit wider for yourself. So essentially, this is how the smoke should look like. And when you're playing around this cubby position smoke, like, we are using the cubby to dodge the enemies' recon utility and flashes and to surprise the enemies from inside of the smoke. But, when you're playing in, in this gap, such as this, you need to move in and out, left and right. Like, this is how you should be holding this smoke. If the enemies are spamming you here, hide, you can play outside of it. Enemies are pushing in, bam, try to surprise them and try to kill them. Like, you cannot play here because you're in a huge angle perception disadvantage. Like, if the enemy jet is peeking you from here and you're standing close to the wall like this, he sees your shoulder, she sees your leg already at this moment of time here. And you don't see a single pixel of that jet. Like, how you move and how you position inside of this cubby smokes to 
outplay the enemies and take easy kills greatly impacts how much success you're gonna find when you're playing this type of setups. Like for example in the A main, like Cubby Smoke should look like this. But I'm never, you know, gonna hold it like this. Because if the enemy is picking me from this wall, he's gonna see the, the tip of my gun, the tip of my shoulder, leg, already like at this moment of time. So I need to basically move in and out, in and out, in and out. Aha, enemies are spamming me. Then I can get out of the smoke and then push in to surprise the enemies as they're executing the site. Or, you know, I can hide and then once again go for in and out and try to fuck up the enemies. So here the angle perception disadvantage complete, completely f you up. And anyways, like, you should, like, in low elo lobbies you really, really, really need to use, like, uh, uh, every opportunity that your teammates create for you. And that is what you need to recognize. Like, learning how to adapt to every bullshit that your allies are doing is very important for your success. Like, if you're in a bonus seek round, if the jet is already holding B main, use her as a bait. You can try to play in that position there. Maybe enemies are not going to clear you. Like, this is Platinum, Diamond, Hilo. Even in Radiant lobbies, players are not properly clearing the corners and angles. Like, like the amount of times that my teammates rush in, they don't take some kind of a position and we die. Is quite enormous for 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 that skill level. Okay, now in this round, we absolutely have no idea what enemies are gonna do. Like in this round, enemies can go A, they can go B, they can split us through mid. Like, we have zero information. In the earlier stages of the game, if you have zero info where the enemies are gonna go, it is better for you to opt in to play on a default bomb site. Like, right now, you should be the one playing in short, you should be the one playing on A site instead of your jet. Simple as that. Now, this thing that you're trying to do, you know, this fake one-way smoke, is fine, you know, it's okay setup. The only difference is that you need to pay more attention to how you position yourself in the earlier stages of the game. And on every single map in Valorant, in my ranked playbook, I mentioned quite specifically what you should do in the first round, second round, third round, fourth round, on every single map. Shadows traveling. Hey, steps. As I said, like, chances are 50-50 that enemies are gonna push A, B, mid, Etc. Etc. Now, listen. Uh, when you're playing ascent, on ascent you really, really need to babysit your teammates with the one-way smokes, especially when they are aggressively taking the A main or B main control. If if you're already playing B site, if you're already playing B site of uh, Ascent, and you notice that your Phoenix is aggressively taking the aim and control, give him the one-way smoke, you know. He can take the full aim and control, he's probably not gonna die in this elo against the enemies that are pushing through the smoke. Probably enemies won't even know how to properly counter this one-way smoke. Support your allies. Like, at the start of the round, on Ascent, you should always do one of your smokes somewhere to support your allies or to support yourself if you're taking the space somewhere and you want to fuck up the enemies. Now, uh, when you're playing this strategy, you know, like uh, playing on top of the pillars uh, uh, with a fake one-way smoke, uh, I highly recommend you to play on this position. Why on this position? So, first of all, uh, chances are higher that enemies are not gonna like, expect you on this pillar, instead of on this position. So basically, you should be playing in this spot, with this smoke, done. And just waiting for the enemies, and fucking them up. Second reason is, when you drop down from this position, if the enemies are executing the B site, and your teammates are maybe stuck on the site, you can instantly teleport on the site, support your teammates on the site, flash the enemies, and maybe take more kills. 
like very rarely I play this spot here, you know, only if enemies start pre-firing me there or I don't know, like uh, I need to play there because Soba has some stupid dart that lands, I don't know, somewhere here, like, I don't know. Play on the left side. And also, if you're already playing, you know, <laughs> listen, an another mistake here, like this, when you're using this smoke, with this setup, you should not be doing the smoke instantly, as the round starts. Like essentially, right now, you know, wait for the KO knife to reveal the enemies. If the KO knife doesn't reveal anyone, enemies are not showing the presence for the next like 5 or 6 seconds, then you can do this smoke to keep the full beam and control and potentially get some easy kills. Like, uh, this smoke is just gonna disappear. And then it, it doesn't do anything. Hey, steps. Hey, man. Can you put a smoke A? Smoke's A, come on. One dash out, one dash out. Jenny. Generator. Listen, uh, when you're going for these type of retakes, uh, you know, obviously focus on where you see the enemies, where your teammates are fighting the enemies, but notice how aggressively, you know, pay attention to how aggressively your teammates are retaking a specific site. If your cipher is already peeking the enemies from the short, you know, from the doors, use your paranoia to support that cipher. Peek out of the smoke with a cypher, try to get some easy kills, you know. Like, don't, uh, you know, let a cypher get some kind of a 1v1 fight now. And uh, lose the numbers advantage. Also, whenever you notice that when en the enemies are split apart like this, like we, Killjoy is aiming, Brimson is aiming. Two enemies are on site, Reyna and Jet. Reyna is dead right now. Like, right now, our number one focus is to isolate that Jet before the rest of the team has come through the aim in, flash her, kill her, round is over. Come on, sir. What the fuck you did? And listen, uh, whenever you're basically pushing from the rafters, uh, retaking the ASAP through the rafters, I mean, we're not retaking enemies, didn't even plan the spike, always expect, you know, this type of stupid place. Always expect that someone is gonna play behind the smoke. I really don't know how... <coughs> how the KO didn't hear the footstep of the jet. Getting up in that position. Like, she, she made a footstep on, on, on top of the box there, but... Whatever, like, I guess he was not ready for that. What the fuck you did? Okay. In the first four rounds... Try. Try to focus a bit more... On the rules that have explained what you should play on each bomb site in the first few rounds. Like, every round up until now. We were right and we were correct where the enemies are gonna go. You're not gonna be correct 100% of the times. You know, you're gonna be correct like 70-80% of the times. But that is still better <coughs> that, than playing the B site for four rounds in a row on a defender side of ascent. You know, in the first four rounds, you need to evaluate how good or how bad your teammates actually are, how much you can trust them, and can you actually fill in the positions for them. If you cannot trust your teammates, you know, they're just dying first, uh, you know, losing the rounds, losing the bombs to control, you're always positioning yourself in a way to counter the enemies yourself. If you are shit, you're not able to defend a specific site, you're not able to, you know, punish the enemies. Cypher, I think enemies are gonna go A set right now. Can you hold A? I'm a trash can this match. I don't know how to defend it myself. You know, don't let your ego come in your way of winning the rounds. But in the first four rounds, just position based on what makes more sense on a specific map, based on your team composition, enemy's team composition, based on the map that you're playing, and that's it. Deployed. 
Now, in this round... I, I Sorry, I spaced out a bit. Now, what I want to say, in this round, I would have played B-side. Once again, because of the... Just a second. Because of the... I mean, I explained this so many times on my streams, like... Uh, because of the A-B rule. Like, generally speaking, you know, the most common thing that development players love to do in a lot of the matches, especially if they are autopiloting and uh, they don't give a shit about winning the game, is uh, every single round they will try to do something different compared to the previous round. So in the first round, enemies pushed A through the A main. Second round, they try to do a A split. Third round, they push B. Second, uh, fourth round, they pushed A. Chances are much higher that enemies will end up in the fifth round here compared to this. So that is why you playing on the B set right now is totally fine. And it is totally fine that you're playing a bit more passively because once again, enemies are playing an eco how by round. There is no reason to play aggro. Here is getting the information with the knife. Maybe, you know, you definitely need to apply a bit more default aggressive setup, you know, like uh, keeping the control of the A main, B main, stopping the enemy's push, delaying the enemy's push, like, with the one-way smokes. Like, on this map, if you're just selling the B main, A main, and mid control, without any pressure, that is a huge problem on a defender side. In a lot of the matches that you're gonna play on Ascent. Like, fight for the A main, B main, you know, do the one-way smoke up here, one-way smoke up here, make the enemies waste some kind of a utility or potentially get a kill before they execute a bomb site. But if you're just giving them for free control of this, control of this, control of this, they're gonna have shit tons of utility to execute the bomb site and to basically destroy you if you're playing passively on the site. Okay, all four, all four. Nice, they can't breach right now, just chill, just chill. Just chill. I have to go B. Rotate, rotate, I have to go B. Okay, listen. Uh, whenever you get a kill from some kind of an off angle, you know, reposition yourself. Right now, enemies know where you are. Like, even through the smoke, they can re-fire you, try to kill you, maybe. Like, you, you got a kill. Strategy worked. Fake one-way smoke worked. We got a kill. We got a numbers advantage. Our team has have the full mid control. We know that Three enemies are in the B main. Now we can play, drop onto the site, drop onto the stairs, do the default smoke to stop the enemy's push. We have the cipher trip wires to additionally fuck up the enemies. We have the paranoia to stop the enemy's push and split the enemies apart. There is no reason to play on this spot. With women, generally speaking, after every, every time you get a kill, you should make the enemies wonder where the fuck did you go. Fake shroud a step. Real shroud a step. Reposition, drop down. I don't stay on these positions for the second kill as well. I got behind Phoenix. And here, instead of taking that clean fight with Arena, once you drop down, like, do a default smoke, so the Cypher doesn't die in market because of some unknown reasons, such as peeking alone and, you know, like, uh, trying to be a hero for your team. Go towards the stairs, use the cipher setup in your advantage, use the paranoia, enemies are done. Like your teammates in mid are holding the full rotation from the B site. Easy round for you. Like cipher is uh, I don't know. Nice. Nice. I mean, if you are cheating. Then you can take the kills like this as well. Like, very good, very good. Generally speaking, in a game of Valorant, you know, the more things you try, the more success you're gonna find. Like, while you were repositioning here, you know, taking these shots was fine. But, once again, with this full Cypher setup and him in the market, even after this kill, it's a bit better if you reposition onto the stairs. You know, do a default smoke, go towards the stairs and be ready to refray your Cypher. Get him out. I scratched myself in the <clears> peaks. 
One teaspoon. Right now, you know, there is absolutely no reason for you to jiggle peek uh, the beam area of the map to, like, uh, take the information in the beam in. Like, on ascent. Respect numbers advantage more than anything else. Respect the refray game. Right now, we just want get, to get the information. Are the enemies pushing through the beam in? Or are they going to rotate? Instead of jiggle picking this angle and risking some 50-50 duel, you know, some random bullet to the head there, jump spot the enemies, you know, see where they are. Do this, do this, aha, uh -huh, they're coming out, do the smoke, we have a cypher setup, bam, we can flash the enemies, their flash, easy kill, aha, uh -huh, one enemy is stuck here because cypher has a tripwire like this, kill that enemy, get back, let the enemy plan the, last enemy plan the spike, who the fuck gives a shit? You're gonna be 4v1 anyways. But here, you know, Jiggle peeking this angle, no reason. I hold T-spawn. Oh, oh, pushing B, pushing B. And that's why you should... You should have been on the stairs. Like, 30 seconds ago you should have been on the stairs, number one. Number two, that's why you should, should have been jump spotting the enemies so that your cypher doesn't take this stupid fight and lose the sight for free like essentially you know see, you're already very close to that elo but uh, especially in like ascendant and immortal elo like uh, you're more of a babysitter than actually anything else in a game like you need to babysit every little mistake every like every shit that your teammates might do to lose a specific round. Because players in Valorant are mega undisciplined. The only thing they see are the kills, the blood. They're watching way too much tense Demon 1. Like, uh, they think they're the aim gods. And, you know, this Cypher, even with his setup, he's gonna pick Market and die alone. Like, you know exactly what you should have done in this round. Let's see how it ends now. Oh, oh, pushing B, pushing B. And now, there is no reason for you to do anything. Chill a bit. Your phoenix has the ultimate. You have a you had a paranoia. You have smoke. You had two smokes, actually. If you didn't use the first one. Okay, Cypher died like an imbecile. Let's wait for the jet to rotate. Let's wait for the phoenix to rotate. Phoenix can use the ultimate to pressure the enemies. Reveal the enemies, we can use a paranoia too. Pressure the enemies back. We can use a double one-way smoke setup to basically keep the enemies locked at the backside. We can do this. Flash the enemies closer on the stairs. Peek out. Clear this with the jet, with the phoenix together. And then just fight for the side control. Clear this. Aha. Uh -huh. They are stuck there. No problem. Let's fake the defuse. Kill them. End of the story. Just play together, please. I don't know why did you use a paranoia there if you're not gonna go for the peak and take this fight. One enemy remaining. <laughs> okay. Three killed. Thank you. Uh, guys, 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 he's not here. He was somewhere. 30 over. seconds he, left. He Are you sure? Behind. What the fuck? They yeah, let yeah, the, the breach cross. And Phoenix just walked through lobby. He flashed main there, bro. What the fuck? Yeah, he was done. Yeah. Oh, he okay. flashed him and he flashed up. What? Okay. Listen, <clears throat> now, once again, I promise, I promise to you, in the lobbies below Immortal 3, use the rule of the default bomb sites, use the AV rule and rule of fear. You're gonna read the enemies 60 to 70% of the times. Like right now. Once again, you should be playing A short. Tell the Cypher, Cypher, I, I don't know, tell KO. KO, go B site, you know, or I don't know, like Phoenix, 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 go B. I'm gonna play A, and I'm gonna stop the enemy's push with a KO knife, KO ultimate, cypher setup, etc, etc. You're allowing your teammates way too much to control the outcome of your rounds. And you're not there really to support them, to stop the enemy's push. Like, if the enemies are so easily readable like this, fuck it, you know. <laughs> Two mid. Yeah, they're gonna split A. Eh? Wow, my eyes are dumb. 
Oof, nice shot. One A main still. Oh my god, 120. Enemy killed. Cover going out. One enemy remaining. Last one was mid. Okay. Okay. okay, listen, man. Uh, on ascent, you have the true numbers advantage. On a defender's side. Fuck the map control and just play the refray game. Like, right, right now, it seriously doesn't matter if this brimstone is gonna, uh, I don't know, pick up the spike, plant the spike on the B side, C side, D side, F side, on ascent. N n respect numbers. Done. Like right now, you don't care where is this brimstone. Bro, you have a spike. You have a spike in the B main, uh, in the A main, right here. Two of your teammates are in this area of the map. He can walk through the short, he can go up here, he can go here, he can go here. Why complicate things? You know, why, why would you be exposed from for so many of these opportunities, rely on two of your teammates to play a proper refray game, and potentially lose this round? Rotate as fast as possible, just connect with them, close the doors, let them defend the aim in, you focus on the rafters, and we can just, st st you know, stack the the aim and position. Cypher and Jet can watch this, you watch the tower, done. Jet, watch careful. Maybe here. Spike spotted A. Also, please pay attention more on your crosshair placement. Uh, when it comes to your mechanical skill, uh, after this VOD review, I'm gonna share with you some kind of uh, tr general training routine and aim training routine that you should use to fix your mechanical problems and gameplay problems as well. Like, I have 100 pre-recorded training examples and aim training programs. Like, we're gonna find something for you. But this is so stupid, man. Like, just, just close the doors, isolate the angles, Focus on aiming. Why Why do we need to risk dying from so many angles? He can be behind us in CT right now. We don't need short. Yeah, look at this. He can be rafters. Jet can die in like five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, maybe he's saving. You can still come have him, right? Mm -hmm. He can come short now as well. Oh, what a stupid position, man. You gotta retire. He definitely took his time. Maybe Listen, from now on, uh, when you end up in this type of scenarios, like your primary focus is uh, isolating as many angles from which enemies can fuck you up and creating this round to be a bit easier than how your teammates actually played it. Close the doors, go aim in. Brimstone cannot win that round. It is impossible for him. Oh yeah, whatever. Now in this round, chances are, I would say, 90% that enemies are gonna go onto the B site. Why? AB rule, rule of fear, plus the enemies have the Killjoy ultimate. To be honest, in all of their lobbies below Immortal 3, when the Killjoy has the ultimate, they always go for this play. How do we counter that shit? <clears throat> you can counter it with some kind of an yours utility. You know, if you have a Sova ultimate, you can destroy it. You don't need to play aggro. Uh, you can counter the enemies. You know, with Odin, if that Killjoy is mentally ill and she's placing the ultimate hero here, we can destroy it with some high penetration weapon. But the best idea in this round right now is to take the full beam and control from the enemies. Just do this one-way smoke here. Even if the enemies pass this one-way smoke, so Killjoy somehow gets on this position, you can just easily flash the enemies here, peek this, kill the Killjoy, Destroy the ultimate, get the fuck out. 
whenever enemy, uh, uh, enemy Killjoy is one ultimate orb away from the ultimate, or she has the ultimate, take the full beam control. It is the best bet and the best gamble that you can make. But you can kill with it. Silence their breach. And always play as aggressive as your teammates are playing. You know, like, if your jet is already holding that beam in every other map, you should, you know, I mean, this can work, you know, but if, if the jet dies without any refer potential, we just lost the numbers for nothing. You know? Knife early, Kero. Knife early, B. So, Kero. Nice. Good job. You, 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 you cannot play this passively against the enemies that have so many ultimates, like uh, they have a breach, killjoy, brimstone ultimate, like they can easily push you from the site and win this round. Maybe they're not gonna do it in this round because they have like, uh, uh, they have the, uh, they're equal in Halbai, but there is a huge chance, you know, that they might try to do some shit with it. And okay, listen, so we already used this setup once. An enemy saw you on this position. Second time, when we're using this setup, why not go on this spot? You know? Ooh, I fucked up the rank. It's, it's Platinum 3. So, why don't we go on this position? And from this spot, we just use a one-way, the fake one-way, up here. And fuck them up from here. You know, enemies might think that you're, once again, playing up there. Maybe pre-fire you. While in reality, you're here. I have cam for me. You should run. You see, whoever that was, actually pre-fired you in this position. Why? Because enemies saw you already play this type of a setup. Like omens, <clears throat> um, when you're doing some kind of an omen outplay, you can do it in like, you can do the same outplay in around like. Two, three, or maybe even four different ways. And you should be switching how you do a specific outplay based on what you saw from enemies in the previous rounds. And also, you know, which outplay enemies actually saw you perform. You cannot do the same shit over and over again. If you already punish the enemies once with this one way, let's do it in a bit different way. But a huge mistake here is like, why are we playing passively against the killjoy that has the ultimate? And please, from now on, you take a kill from an off angle, you take a kill, reposition. Don't let the enemy swing you with a perfect crosshair placement, you know, fuck you up, etc, etc. Yo, I could totally thank you for the Prime Gaming some man, and thank you for scamming Jeff Bezos, brother. And here, you, you, need, you need to be, you know, slightly faster with your decision making and a bit better and to focus more on your utility usage instead of just fighting the enemies in the clean fights if you already want to play the omen and master this agent like here for example we killed enemy smoker Akio activated the ultimate enemies don't have a smoke for the CT they cannot cross into the site with a killjoy's ultimate unless they fight us to the default, you know, we took a kill onto the enemy jet, drop down, do the smoke, enemies are fucked. You, we can revive KO. Enemies are not gonna kill our jet in some stupid 1v1 fight if she decides to repick. Protect yourself, protect your teammates, respect utility a bit more. Could just okay. fuck the Bro, smoke, smoke, smoke. They both, they both left corner, both left corner. Nice, good job. One enemy remaining. Take operator. Spike down B. CT. She cannot be there. Didn't him. Okay, listen. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes that I see in my coaching sessions when I'm coaching Omen players is, uh, uh, you know, paranoia. Yes, you're using it for the retakes. You're using it for the executes. Uh, you're using it for yourself to, you know, fight the enemies and I'll fight the enemies, but also try to use it in a bit more three-dimensional space as well. Like, if you already see that 
you know, your Phoenix is fighting this Killjoy. And she's gonna fight the Killjoy in a 1v1 fight. Use the Paranoia through the wall. Flash the Killjoy. Phoenix is gonna get an easy kill. And we're not risking losing this round like a potatoes. Okay, chill, chill, chill. Okay. Okay, I mean, here, you know that uh, Killjoy is in the B main area of the map. The KO is watching the full rotation. Killjoy doesn't, ha doesn't have time. They, they have only 30 seconds to plant the spike. So she doesn't have time to do this. I mean, she maybe has time, but she needs to run fast as fuck, boy. You know? Like, uh, right now, we have a smoke. We can delay the Killjoy's, like, retake for 15 seconds. In 15 seconds, we're gonna have a, another smoke. We can play for the speedway, hold this, not to risk some kind of a stupid 50-50 gunfight. 30 seconds spike left. Spike down, B-man. Yeah, we'll probably come for a bit. Oh, we have a spike here, actually. Even better. Like, what, what, what was another mistake here is like, why did you even let her take? Well, the back, I got oh, you did this smoke. Fuck. Here, man, like, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't see that we have a spike here. I just, you know, this one way, bam, done. Play an off angle like this. She cannot swing you here. Easy kill. After 13, 14 seconds, replenish the smoke. Bam. You delay her peak for like 25, 30 seconds. She doesn't have time to plant the spike. I don't know why did you even leave the B man with the spike there. Cover going out. And this was an absolutely terrible fight. Like, I, I'm not even gonna talk about this fight. Like, you should, you need to use your utility in a bit smarter way. I, I want you to focus more on your utility usage. Like, think, use your brain, like, ask yourself, how can I use my utility right now to delay this killjoy or to create some kind of a fight that works in my favor? Like, she, need, she has only 22 seconds to plan the spike. One way smoke on the lamp. Play from the speedway here. Hold the one way, she's dead. She waits for the smoke to disappear. Let her run, flash her, take an easy kill, drop down. Thanks, God, we won that round. Now, in this round, once again, I would play on to the A side. The reason is very. And I would take the full. Aim and control with my teammates, with the one-way smoke up here. Why? Because of the enemy's pattern of pushing. And that's it. Now, enemies are either gonna be pressuring us on mid or A main. It's better for us to gamble onto the A side, tell your KOK of knife the B main, play the B side, jet, play bottom mid with the operator, and that's it. Uh, pay attention to your crosshair placement. Uh, I'm gonna give you some kind of a training for this. There is like five, six, seven different ways how we can fix crosshair placement in the game, but your crosshair placement is very iffy from time to time. And when it comes to holding the angles in this specific way, like generally speaking, you know, this is how I would hold this angle. But I don't think that you have a reaction time to react onto the enemies here in any case scenario. Hold the these tight angles as narrow as your reaction time allows you, and place your crosshair towards the ending position of enemy speak. You know, like here instead of holding this angle like this, if I was you, I would maybe hold it like this. You know, a bit wider, just to have higher chances of taking that kill and fucking up the enemies. This is what I can do. Especially if the enemies are walking like it's an easy kill with a burst fire and you can just reposition instantly. But I don't think you can react to this. Steps in front of A, not many. Okay, a kill drain mid, left side here, here. Anyways, you're, you're really allowing your teammates to... ...to control the outcome of your rounds quite a lot. I'll try to snipe him. Shadows. 
Flash, 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 flash. Ten. Minus eighty on bird. Okay, listen. Uh, after this photo review, I'm gonna share with you one very specific three trainings and three daily routines that you will perform every single day for the next two months. I swear to God. If you follow that training, in the next two months, you will be minimum ascendant one just from that training. Min minimum. Oh my god, kid. What the heaven? Like, like, for example, here, you know, your key is on top of the rafters, Cypher is on the side. We know that one enemy is aiming, one one guy is like generator. What you know, you're not ready to fight with your teammates. What should what, what should what should you do at least? Flash that guy in the generator so your teammates can take an easier fight on the enemy that is speaking from the A main. Ten. Minus AT on Brimstone, not, yeah. Oh my god, kid. On the heaven. Planted. Ooh, this was not bad. This was this was quite okay try, you know. No. This was okay. I mean, oh my god, kid, under heaven. A bit, a bit better, a bit better idea here because we have a long range weapon. Uh, was to maybe flash the guy that is planting the spike. And just isolate a one-on-one -one duel with a guy that is like under, or maybe like uh, use the f in in the seal like fake shroud. The steps are so fucking good. Like basically, enemies, you 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 can sell the fake shroud the steps eight out of ten times. You know, like one enemy is r below the rafters, one enemy is generator. You know, in this elo you can try faking the enemies twenty-four-seven. Basically, you know, don't, don't overuse it, but, uh, you know, you should definitely not, like, uh, not try it at all. Like, here, do a smoke here, flash the enemy there, and do this. Like, and then just wait for the enemies to peek. Like, someone is always gonna be curious, like, maybe Breach is gonna peek, bam, easy kill. Then, after you kill that guy, then maybe we can use a real Shwada step to go all the way into this position, just use a better teleport. Or maybe we can use another fake Shroudest step to make the enemy brim breach think that we are somewhere on the site. Like, fake fake Shroudest steps is another thing that I see in my coaching sessions, like, all my players are not using at all. I like this play, but, you know, this, this elevator smoke, uh, uh, you generally want to use... Uh, when you're playing, when you're retaking the A site with some close range weapon, or like, uh, I don't know. Like, usually I do the smoke when I'm retaking the site with some kind of a close range weapon. Like, uh, I don't think that in this scenario I would use it. Okay, since enemies were very persistent in following the ABAB pattern, it is totally fine that you're playing B set. And generally speaking, when you're playing Omen and you have the ultimate on the defender side. It doesn't matter where you play, since you can connect with your teammates with your ultimate almost immediately. One thing that you def definitely need to start doing a bit more on Ascent is playing more aggro towards the A main and B main, and keeping at least one of these areas of the maps in your control to make the enemies waste their utility, waste their time with the pushes, uh, delay the enemy's push, etc. etc. You almost got a kill there. Bro. I I underestimated my guy. Smoke, smoke, smoke. Cover going out. Jet here. Jet on me, don't this reposition that you did here, like I I don't wanna speak about it because you know, like don't don't use your utility if there is a 
Huge chance that enemies are gonna go for Reapy and try to kill you. Smoke, smoke, smoke. Cover going up. You know, like way to rotate towards the city and then. Jet here. Jet on me. Don't, don't rotate. It's... Yo, what the fuck is our cipher doing, man? Oh, yo, 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 yo. Two tombs. Okay. Mid. We stop the enemies, push on B. Not bad, not bad. Not bad. I, I love how you play there, but... Okay, 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 okay. Short, 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 short. Here, right now, when you're... When you're... Uh, Jet died on short. First of all, when your Jet saw the enemies pushing the short, you should have done... A one-way smoke to stop the enemy's push. Second of all, when the jet died, you should have immediately used your ultimate towards the A site to support your cipher. Like chances right now are enemies are only pushing. You know, no try to notice you have a problem reading the enemies and their patterns, and that's why your game decisions are lagging. And I need to teach you this, but I cannot teach you this in this what review. I'll send you some videos for that. But if you already notice that enemies, you know, j just commit over the area of the map where they find some kills or they are just playing as five, like do, do a bit faster rotations, especially on ascent. When you lose the A shore control or the market control, you can rotate immediately. Like, especially A short in Garden. If the enemies take the Garden and A-Shore control, they can fuck up your Cypher and Phoenix in so many different ways. Like, you don't know if it is gonna be a gangbang Bukaki, like, uh, I don't know, some kind of a threesome, like, they're... It's just stupid. Off your feet! This one goes to the Cypher. Blind demon or something. Flinting. Flash! One chain. Find him. One enemy remaining. Spike down A. No info. He was the main in the beginning. When the close thing is traveling. Okay. Bro. When the close thing is traveling. Is Phoenix uh, having a mental disease? Why did he open the doors? Like in this type of a scenario, the more angles you isolate, the more chances you have to win this round. Like here, okay, just watch the rafters. We watch the aim and we have the spike. Like, I, tr try to tell your teammates to isolate the angles in this type of scenarios. Tell the Phoenix, Phoenix brother, close the doors, bro. You know, watch the aim in with me. Keo, come with us, like, watch the rafters for us, like, why are we complicating the rounds? Sparks A. 30 seconds left. What are you looking at? Cover going out. Oh, what the fuck is the timing? He's walking up heaven. Careful, he has out. Walking up heaven, walking up heaven. Paranoia exists! Paranoia exists! Nice, Phoenix. You are complicating in these three. Like you are complicating these rounds so much, it is insanity. Basically, like I don't know, man. Both you and your teammates, you definitely, definitely like uh, need to focus on on compensating these mistakes. You know, telling your teammates what to do. This is insanity. Lime Pro, thank you all for the prime. Give me some man and thank you for scamming Jeff Bezos. Akritoli, thank you all for the prime. Give me some and thank you for scamming Jeff Bezos, brother. Cover going out. Okay, listen. So, in the last round, enemies pushed B. They failed the push on B and they rotated to A. In this round, we have absolutely no idea. What are the enemies gonna do? So, 
That is why the best gamble is to play on our default bomb site for ascent, and our default bomb site is a site. Now, when I do, if you're already playing a site and you want to do this one way smoke in a main, it is much better if you use the smoke from this position because smoke travels faster and deploys faster for their jet. So enemies won't have the time to peek through the smoke. If you deploy the smoke all the way from this position and you do it like this, Cover going out. enemies have the time to peek this position before the smoke deploys. Good. Okay, lot man. Three people more. Okay. <clears throat> this was the first time that we were not correct. You know, in the last nine rounds, where the enemies are gonna go. But it was much smarter and better to gamble onto the A site. Of course, through the smoke through the cage, I get a one tap. Man, listen, if you if you already have only one smoke for a full by round retake against the enemies that are equal hal by, what the fuck is that smoke on the speedway? Right now you should be doing the default retake smoke, you know, smoking this for your allies. I mean you should you should have done the smoke like ten seconds ago. When your team has got a contact with the enemy B. Pay attention, your smoke users, it's not that good. One shot. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how he even survived the initial teleport, like... Uh, <laughs> enemy jet smoked perfectly the stairs. <laughs> Listen. Here, m much better play for this retake would have been if you... Wait here for your teammates to regroup. <clears throat> Do this smoke to stop the enemy's push. And if your teammates are already picky and pushing through the market, just use a paranoia here. Get out and swing with your allies. I don't know. Th this teleport that you did here, you should have been dead while you were doing the teleport. It, 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 it was a miracle that you even survived this shit. And anyways, if the enemies are, you know, if you're 4v5 and enemies are equal hal by, it's okay, man. You, you don't need to do some aggro play, some stupid shit, like, still you have an advantage. Still you can win that round in a default way, you know, doing a regular smokes, regular paranoia. Not too many, you know, risky teleports like this. And you can still win this round just by playing with your allies. What? Oh, come on. the cage, I get... And in this round, once again, because enemies have the Killjoy ultimate, chances are 70-80% that enemies are gonna go B, so we should take the full B main control with the one-way smokes. And stop playing the fucking frenzy. It's not that good of a weapon. Especially for Omen. On a defender side, just buy a shorty with utility and light shield. You'll you can kill one enemy, take his gun, and that's it. With a cubby position smoke and st stuff like that. Guess what? The enemies are B. You should run. Again, with the smoke. What the? Yeah, bro, bro, they can see where you shoot the sheriff when it's this way. Bro, I'm moving while shooting. Nice. Oh, this is a winnable. <clears throat> <clears throat> one logs. One lane, one log. <laughs> I mean, here, I, I don't know. This match is comical, literally. Like, uh, guys, please, like, you know, if, if you're small here, you know, the worst shit you can do. He has tried to kill the enemies with the sheriff. Like this. You know, your chances of killing that enemy is like below 10%, while the chances of enemies killing you is like 50%, basically, and finding your body there. Because, you know, enemies need have a less area of the map to 
find your body and to find your head. Now, after after you kill this brimstone that is, I don't know what the fuck he's doing, you should have picked up his gun and then fight the enemies. I mean, you know, you have a frenzy only like, how are we going to win this round? And listen, one thing that should always be on the auto on a good autopilot mode for you as an omen player. Whenever you get stunned, flashed, something, some bad shit happens for you. Yo, Prem, Premcast, thank you all for the tier. Thank you all for the prime gaming sub and thank you for scamming Jeff Bezos. So, whenever enemies, you know, flash you or stun you and you think they're gonna peek you, use your shrouded steps immediately. It, there should be something that is always at the back of your mind. Always there, lingering, you know, that information. Here, if the breach stuns you already, pull out the TP, teleport there. Even if, even if the breach peeks you in the middle of your teleport, you have higher chances of surviving, you know, that peak by doing this, instead of waiting here and praying to God that you're somehow gonna kill that breach with a frenzy. That's all. I can hold A with my tripwires. Uh, in this round, I would actually once gamble on A site. The last round, the enemies push B only because uh, of Killjoy's ultimate. So in this round, I would take the full aim and control with my one-way smoke, and I would use my ultimate to rotate fast towards the B site if the enemies are pushing B. Crosshair placement here is bad. Mega bad. A bit better. Higher, higher, higher. A bit higher. Uh, never mind. Off your feet. So, you played 12 rounds on a defender side of Ascent. We read the enemies correctly 11 rounds by following a basic knowledge and basic common sense in the game. Which means, and you miss the sight that enemies are gonna hit nine times during this world review. That means that you definitely need to put a bit more focus on map that you're playing, enemies patterns, enemies available utility and ultimates in order to position yourself better to counter the enemies. Like you're just positioning yourself however the fuck you want, however the fuck your teammates tell you to do, and you're really relying a lot on these guys to win these rounds. Yo, Severfield, what's for you, man? No, I'm stunned. You need to blind or something, Cameron. Come on. Oh, oh, I, I was stunned by the fucking ooh, bear. I'm, I'm sitting here, how about you? <clears throat> I, think, I think that paranoia kind of... That paranoia kind of went to Jesus Christ. I mean, to Hades. I don't know, so some hell... Lucifer got that paranoia. <laughs> Cameron, come on! Oh, oh, I, I was stunned by the fucking ooh, bear. I'm, I'm sitting. Listen, you know when you're doing these uh, vertical paranoias, like pay attention, you know, like don't really drop them through the ground. You hope what you? Spike planted. Jenny. You're doing main. One. You get flushed. You get stunned. Teleport. Bye. Smoke main or something. Nice one under one main. Under my body. Nice guy main. Last Molly's main. on bomb. Molly's on bomb. Cover going out. Last player. Yeah. This was so good. Like uh, first of all, like. Uh, you know, his teammates have a bit of point, but also at the same time, I don't know why they're flaming him so much. Like, he is doing everything when he has time to do. You know, like, he couldn't do paranoia faster. He is stuck in this position. He cannot do the smoke immediately while he's getting anally penetrated by the enemies. So, uh, I don't know, like, these guys are really annoying.
really, really annoying. Uh, smoke main or something. Nice one. This teleport play here was a bit risky because you know he knew that the breach is on the site. And what, listen, so let me give you another rule. Uh, whenever, whenever you have true numbers advantage, don't do any unnecessary utility that can fuck you up or fuck your teammates up. Like for example here, <clears throat> when we ended up in a 4v2, there was absolutely no reason for that teleport. You know, th that is exactly that unnecessary utility that can kill you. We can just drop with our teammates down, kill the breach, and then kill the killjoy. This smoke on the spike was fine, very good. If you're already playing against the killjoy, look for the lineups. Destroy the molly before it activates and then defuse the spike. And here, when he got a second molotov on his feet, I mean, with 50 HP, you're not surviving this. Very good half defuse, but you should have dropped the defuse, get away from the spike, and then go for another half defuse, while the KO is holding the aim in for you. Last to be honest, this half, you could have ended 11-1 if you just paid attention more on what enemies are doing and if you try to control the outcome of the rounds yourself. If you're a bit more aggro towards the beam and aim and area of the map, taking more map control from the enemies, not allowing the enemies to take the full aim and beam and control for free without using a single piece of utility. Breach never used a single flash. A single stun in the beam and aim and area of the map. Reyna as well. Like that is something that should not be happening for you. Unless enemies are equal or halva, it's then it's okay, whatever. Okay. We're gonna move on uh, the on the uh, attacker's half just to take a piss. Is done. Yo, bro. Too much Valorant today, man. Another eight hour stream. Okay. So, uh, next topic attacker side of ascent. On ascent on the attack, your number one primary focus A side and A short. Number two focus uh, mid area of the map. Number three, focus B site. What does this mean for you? Usually on this map, in the earlier stages of the game, like the first one to four rounds, the best idea for you is to try to test the enemies around the A set and mid before you decide to go B. On the B site and in B main, there is an enormous amount of shit that can fuck you up uh, from... Uh, early flanks, lurks, to utility, to Sova spamming you through the wall with, I don't know, like, Sheriff, Guardian, Odin, shit like that. So, anyways, A site is also our default site. 
But how do we decide what to push in the first round on Ascent? So, enemies have 0 or 1 Sentinel. So basically 0 or 1 from these guys right here. Do a 5-man push on A, 3 rounds in a row. Enemies have 2 plus Sentinels. In the first round, do the A split, where 3 of you guys go through mid, 2 of you guys go through A main. Spike should go here, here, you should go here, and here. If you're doing the mid split, you're doing the mid smoke, garden smoke, and pushing with your allies. I've explained everything about the first round of Ascent in my ranked playbook, so just watch that. Generally speaking, pushing the B-set in the first round on this map is not really the best idea. And there's a lot of bad shit that can happen, especially in the ELO we're playing right now. What the fuck are you buying in the first round, man? First round of Ascent on the attacker's side. Classic, light shield, two smokes, two shrouded steps. Always. And your goal right now is to teleport inside of your jet smoke to take the control of the round yourself and to support your teammates. H how are you playing classic pistol with two smokes? We're saving money for what? For, for the next round when we lose this one? What the fuck is that smoke? What, what are we doing here? Enemies have only killed you as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a sentinel. Where do Sentinels players usually play the first round? B side. Like 80% of times, this Killjoy in the first round is gonna play B. Look at the enemy's team composition. Bro, just tell your teammates, hey guys, let's do a 5-man push on A. Done. Why do you love to complicate your rounds and then everything? Like, essentially, <clears throat> you know, when you're playing on the attacker's side. In the first round, you should always tell your teammates what to do. You know, where they should push and what they should execute based on your team composition, enemy team composition and the map that you're playing. Then, you're navigating your teammates and IGLing them only when you have some really good idea or if you need to composite some of their mistakes. Now, against this team comp, pushing B site is number one a bit of a suicide. And number two, like, uh, uh, also, you know, doesn't make any sense essentially. And economy management, zero points. What the fuck did you buy? Nothing. And also, why are you going through mid right now? We're not doing a B split. Your cypher is alone. Let your cypher lurk flank. You need to use your smokes for your teammates that are going through B main. Because if you already want to split the B set of Ascent, you should send like one or two teammates here and Three or four teammates should be fighting for mid. It's really hard to do like a 3-2 split or, you know, on B site. If you already have three teammates here, play with them and execute the site with them. Chat close right. Nice refect. CC and stairs. CC and stairs. We don't have to commit. They're already going to be leaving A. Let's just go A. Fight, Omen, why are you nice. fighting? Run away, run away. Okay, A3, A3, guys, run away, run away. Yes, exactly. No charges. Take you so long to realize. Smoke Garden. You should smoke Heaven or something. Come on, going out. Okay. L let me give you one very common rule that I give in every VOD review. So. If you're pushing a bomb site only through the short area of the map, so this is the um, this is quite literally the short area of, of uh, A site, but if you're pushing, let's say, B site only through here, your number one and primary focus is clearing the main area of the map as soon as possible. Because very rarely your teammates are going to expect the enemies here. And a lot of times, your teammates are going to get absolutely fucked by not clearing this position. 
So here when we were pushing short as three. You should have smoked garden, tower, close the doors, check, you know, your teammates are checking the site. While your teammates are checking their site, check the aiming area of the map. Here, one enemy can still be in the vines, and Phoenix didn't check the vines. We don't know where is this breach, I guess. Phoenix <clears throat> good. And to be honest, like this is one of the worst postman positions you can take on on ascent. Like this spot is a death sentence. If you get stuck there, you're fucked. Essentially, like right now, you know, your phoenix is in the, your phoenix is in the, what's happening here? What? Your phoenix is in the aiming area of the map. Your hero is under. Like, there, there's far better positions that you can play. You can play on top of the generator, do the one-way smoke for short, hold the tower. You can play like around the gen, you can play under with one of your teammates and play a crossfire. You can use a smoke TP there, like... Anything is better than getting stuck there. The enemy a spike. Phoenix still good, Molly. What you do? Your smoke's about to drop, <laughs> heaven. Watch out, watch out, watch out! <laughs> also, listen, uh, if the enemies are only retaking the... A site, through A short, and tower, you don't need to fight for the short. You know, on the short, just do a one-way smoke here and play somewhere on the site or from the main. And just kill the enemies on tower. If this guy is speaking through the short smoke, easy kill. This was such a terrible position in a post plant. Definitely, man, like, you know. How your team is positioned in the post plant and from which angles enemies are pushing depends where you can and where you cannot play. If one teammate is under, one teammate is in aiming. You're either playing in aiming with your teammate, or you're playing with that teammate on site, on top of the generator, below the site, somewhere safe. You cannot be exposed from the short and from the from the rafters at the same time. Thirty seconds left. Or what? What you can also do. <coughs> What you can also do is like, uh, this one-way smoke is great for Cover going out. stopping the enemy's push from the tower. What are you doing, bro? Fake. Listen, uh, if you have this type of annoying teammates that are not giving you any good comms, and they're just flaming you, the best idea is to mute them. If they impact your mentality in a negative way. I keep all of my teammates like uh, unmuted, even if they're annoying, and if, you know, even if they are toxic, because I don't give a shit. Like you know, I, I even in real life, I, I don't give a fuck about people's opinion that much. So you know, it doesn't affect me in, in any way. Like if I make some kind of a mistake, I trash talk myself, anyways. Uh, but uh, you know. If this is one of the things that is impacting your mentality in a negative way, just mute that cipher from now on. Now listen. Uh, when you lose the first round of Ascent, then in a second round, you know, if the enemies have like zero or one Sentinel, you can do a five-man push on A again, and do some kind of an aggressive execute with a short or classic pistol and try to outplay the enemies. If the enemies have two plus Sentinels, you can maybe try to fight for the mid control, you know, you can smoke this, smoke this, tell your teammates to explode through bottom mid or through short. That is the best bet for you to potentially win this round. The worst thing you can do in Valorant in these, uh, when you're equal hull by, on the attacker's side is default. Like, literally the worst thing. Bro, right now, you're giving the enemies a 1v1 fight everywhere. While the enemies have the outlaws, better guns, better everything. It's okay to have one lurker or flank, you know, cypher lurking B main and trying to maybe do something, but the rest of the team should be working together. Like right now, you should either be 
already with your jet in KO in A main, or you should be, you know, jump spotting top mid and playing with your Phoenix. That fight was fucking crazy. <laughs> Ooh. Listen, man. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, this is something that I, I... Unfortunately, I cannot teach you just uh, through one word review and how to do it and how to recognize these type of things. This is also something that comes more with experience. But right now, you made a, an extremely good bait for your Phoenix. If you just keep baiting for that Phoenix... He's probably gonna take that kill on Killjoy. I you survive by a miracle here. Uh, like, instead of you picking in a clean fight, you know, jump spot the Killjoy. See if she's still picking the bottom mid. Do this. Tell the Phoenix, Phoenix pick the Killjoy. Then the Phoenix is taking the fight with the Killjoy. Bam, 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 bam. No. And also, please don't pick the angles when the gun is not in your hands, when you didn't finish the reload. Like, common knowledge. Come on, common sense. Your Phoenix, please slash you. Yeah, we can like blind it. Against this team composition, pushing the B side is a suicide. <clears throat> now, on the attacker side, in the first four rounds, read where the where are the enemies positioned. You know, like we know that Brimstone and Killjoy are playing B. Reyna, Jet, and Breach are somewhere somewhere around the A site. In this anti-bonus round, the first full-by round, you have higher chances of winning the round by pushing A and taking that gamble instead of going B. Like, why are we sending our teammates into a death sentence? And please, for the love of God, whenever you're playing against the enemies, in the earlier stages of the game, like the first like four or five rounds, and enemies are eco, halbi, bonus, on a defender side. Tell your teammates to play together, S5, towards one specific objective. Cypher, no, 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 Cypher, you don't need to lurk this round. We have the gun advantage. Let's win this round, please. You know. Like, I, I never... You know, teach the players that I coach to be IGL or to have some high levels of communication. Like, yeah, that's, that's fucking bullshit. That doesn't work in rank solo queue. You know, 80% of times your teammates are not going to listen to you. But it's still good to try, you know, to IGL your teammates on a macro and micro level in the first round on both attackers and defenders side. In every round where the enemies are eco, hal by bonus. And whenever a match is going to shit and your teammates are making some mistakes in terms of their utility usage. Sneak, sneak up and then we flash. Sneak up, sneak up, sneak up. Everyone sneak. Blinding. Cover going out. Shadows trapped. I'm stunned. Do you wanna go out? No, no, no. Here, everything here. Three people. More four or more. You have four people, you guys. Just run away. Judge, Brim, Breach, Killjoy. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I don't know, I don't know Joy. what you're doing no, here. Everything here, three people. More I mean, th th this was a death sentence, like, from the beginning. Or more. You have four people, you guys, just run away. Jet, Brim, Breach, Killjoy. I don't know, like, uh, listen, if your teammates uh, are already rotating, they already give you some kind of a call, you need to follow them up. Especially here, when the when the cipher got a kill, this is an instant rotation for you. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. By the way, man, th that wall is not spammable with a vandal. You know, you need a high penetration. Weapon. Never mind, could just see you. Gun out, gun out. The enemy can be bit. That's why I didn't understand. You have to commit. Just push. <clears throat> You said Kyojo was B because he was A. I said that. Oh good guys, you got this. Oh, oh, I don't know man, like these rounds are so chaotic, like uh, there's so many things that we can discuss, but the what is already two hours long. <laughs> Listen. Like okay. So we discussed 
everything up, up until this point. Now, here, when we're crossing the mid area of the map, if we're already low HP, and there is a chance for you to die, just teleport. You know, use your TP to connect with your teammates faster and to get ready for the push with them. Now, just when your teammates were going through the short, you should have given them the smoke for the garden and always keep the track of your signature ability. When your as soon as your signature ability recharges, ask yourself where can I use this piece of utility to potentially fuck up the enemies or help my teammates. Now, next thing. Uh, I don't see, that's what I didn't understand. You have to commit, just push! If... If your care is closing the doors here, use a TP. You know, use a teleport to go through these doors instead of crossing this area of the map. J just crossing this area of the map was already too risky because one enemy could have been in the garden and could have killed you here. Feel free to use your shrouded steps to reposition, to connect with your teammates and to have a better timing for something. It's okay. Even if you waste them in that type of a way. It was B because he was A. I said that. Now here. When you kill this breach, even though this fight was very dangerous, thanks God he had a judge, what you should have done is simply destroy the doors and avoid the fight with the enemies. You're 44 HP and you have a cipher on the lurk and flank. Whenever you have this type of a teammate alive, they have some really good timing or really good flank and lurk onto the enemies. Your primary job is to delay the enemies as much as you can. And right now, if you just destroy the doors, do a one-way smoke on short, on top of the doors, watch the tower with Archeo, that cipher is gonna have... Uh, <clears throat> probably enough time to backstab the enemies. Like, the one way smoke I'm talking about is this one, obviously. And also, we're not isolated into a 1v1 stupid duels. You're fighting a 1v1 duel, KO is fighting a 1v1 duel, why? You know, no reason. Good guys, you got this. Like, you have a lot of uh, stupid fights that you pick in your gameplay. A lot of unnecessary fights, a lot of the fights where you don't need to fight the enemies, a lot of the fights that are not working in your favor at all. And that is something that you need to work on as well. You know, deciding a bit better and asking yourself, is this really a fight I want to take? You know, is this really something I need to fight at this moment? Can, can I fight a bit smarter and better? Maybe by using my utility to outplay the enemies, maybe, since I'm playing Omen. <laughs> Oh, fuck. No. Fucking hell, why do we- Shut the fuck up, okay. Listen. On Ascent from now on. Test the enemies first on A site. Then test the enemies on mid. And then test them on B. It is just better. Like, B pushes, especially in the elos below, like, uh, Ascendant 1. Bro, it's a fucking cancer. You know, like, it, it's... I don't know. Your teammates... In this elo... It's really hard. It's really fucking hard. <coughs> to push properly and dodge... You know, enemies uh, spam... Enemies sentinel utility... Stuns, flashes, and shit like that. Like, focus more... Towards the ace at the middle. Oh, I have ult. Wait. Wait for Molly. Wait for Molly. Two market. Two market. Two market. Two market. Two market. Frostily, what's you, man? Okay. Wait for Molly. When it comes to this push. I have nothing to shit about. If you teleported anywhere during this round, you would have died like a potato, poten potentially. It is really good that you didn't teleport. And uh, the only thing that I would have done differently is, you know, for a default smoke, uh, if you don't want to use your smoke for some aggressive play for market, this one-way smoke here is far better than a regular smoke. Because if the enemies are peeking from this smoke, 
they're always in some kind of a disadvantage and they're absolutely fucked. Uh, and now in the post plant, don't play fucking aggro. Uh, sorry, sorry, that, that's uh, that's stupid. Uh, in the post plants, you want to play as aggressive <coughs> as your most aggressive teammate is playing. Unless you have some other win potential and win condition. So on the B set, if your teammates are fighting here, you're fighting with your teammates, even if it is one. If your teammates are fighting here, you're fighting here, and that's it. So here, you know. Wait, wait a okay. In this post plant, since our phoenix is stuck in the B main, we can fight with our phoenix, it's totally fine. But I would try to play on the phoenix contact to surprise the enemies and wait to see if he's ready to fight the enemies with me. Just play with me, I have a flash. flash. The reason why I'm explaining all of this is like, uh, you know, at a certain point in Valorant, mechanical skill kinda evens out. Like, for example, already from <coughs> Immortal 3, maybe even Immortal 2, you know, majority of Immortal players have the identical mechanical skill to a Radiant player. And these type of shits won't work forever, you know, like, uh, that jet should have pre-aimed you there and deleted you basically on, on, on the speedway, like, I, I don't know, she just... She peaked B main area of the map and didn't even clear the speedway. Cover going out. Don't peek them. Lock in sight. One enemy remaining. Okay. I got no. Knife A, maybe we can go down mid. Reloaded. Or we can just smoke bottom mid. One class. Shadows traveling. Yeah, nobody close. Is ready. Just go. Okay, let me give you another tip. Because this one was kind of boring. I mean, it's boring completely. Listen. Uh, in all of the lobbies below Immortal 3. Uh, in all of the lobbies below Immortal 3. Like, uh, if your teammates are doing some kind of a split on A, or the spike is going through mid, play with your teammates on mid. Because on Ascent, the most amount of mistakes that your teammates can make is in the mid area of the map. Like, literally, they, they can die from short, from bottom mid, from some weird peak, peak through the smoke, pop flash through the smoke, try to compensate that from now on. Okay, like if your team, if you have only jet aim in, and three of your teammates are mid with a spike, fight with them first, and then when we slow down the round, maybe we can reconnect with the jet, push through aim in and shit like that. Anyways, like enemies give us a spike aim in for free. Spike down mid. Anyways, I I I just don't know. Why are we complicating things so much? Like, we didn't try a single round, a 5-man push on A site that is, theoretically speaking, easier to push against this team composition. Killjoy is B. Breach and Brimstone are kind of rotating, you know, but we can just wait for their utility to go down. It's try, you know, generally speaking, you know, in Valorant, on the attacker side, the first type of gameplay that you should try to abuse the enemy against the enemies are the five men pushes somewhere, you know, together. And then as the match is progressing, you're adapting yourself to the enemies and adapting your playstyle based on what worked and what didn't work. And here, trying to do this split through mid or... I don't know, like, fighting for the mid control, why? We, we don't, like, you know... Simpl the more you simplify your gameplay ranked environment, the more success you're gonna find, essentially. Last player standing. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, they're creeping here and here. One F3. Cover going now. Prepare for hellfire. No, we don't fight. Why have you bought vandals on? Please, uh, you know th this smoke is shit. Obviously, uh, when when you're using the omen smokes, always remember one most important tip: precision of the smoke is always more important than the speed of the smoke. You know, take your time, look at the minimap, look at the shadow form, deploy a good smoke. Bad smoke will always cost you more rounds than a slow smoke. And if you cannot find a smoke in less than three seconds, one way or some kind of a specific smoke that you need to do, do that smoke as fast as possible. But take your time. You know, like this smoke will cost you much more than a Cover going out. smoke that is slow. Nico, I'm bewildered. Yes, they were pushing up. G yes, pinst! Thank you for the Prime Gaming sub, man. Nice flash, go. No, oh, I'm back. Three people there, man. Shadows traveling. Watch out. Good to me. Flash me. I killed you alone, B. Fine, fine, fine. Patience. Patience, my friend. Patience. You know. You're safer? Did the ultimate right now. Chill a bit. You know? Wait for the ultimate. We don't need to peek immediately. You know? Chill a bit, hold the angle, hold the... Hold the market. Killjoy alone, B. Don't use paranoia immediately. Aha! Uh -huh. Enemy killjoy is in the beam. Yo, Odin, thank you all for the prime, give me seven. Here. Enemy killjoy is in the B main. Aha! Uh -huh. Now, we can use a paranoia. Bam! 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 To close the gap with the stinger and kill that killjoy. I don't know, you kind of feel... In, in these high pressure situations, you just need to like... <sighs> Bro, my room smells like shit. Uh, but, you know, breathe in. Like, take your time. You don't need to... Immediately make some kind of a move. If your cipher is already re revealing the enemies. I don't know, I feel like you're kind of rushing things out. You, you see an enemy, you want to fight that enemy immediately. You, like, take two seconds to think. What type of utility do you have? How you can outplay the enemies and how you want to fight the enemies. Throughout the whole world, this guy, he sees an enemy. Ooh. Woohoo! Let's fight him! <laughs> let's let's fight this! Let's peek! Eighty on her, eighty. Nice. Okay, listen. Uh, if you already know that all of the like once again you're rushing things out too much, man, and you're not using your brain and you're not paying attention at all to the game. Pay more attention. Listen. So. Your jet is pushing the killjoy. Follow up the jet. Teleport there. Kill the killjoy. Take the gun from the killjoy. Now. All three enemies. Are in the city. Close the market doors. So we annihilate one choke point. Do a one way smoke here. Bam. Muy bien. You know. Why are you going sight? When your cipher is here, here. Jet is here and you know like we know that all of the enemies are CT. 80 on her 80. Reloading. 
Okay. I don't know, I, I really feel that, that the huge mistake here is like uh, with the economy that we have we cannot really like you know, let, wait for the enemies to just stomp us. You need to go for some kind of an outplay here and to take more space from the enemies. I don't know why we allow the enemies to like, like, like uh, why did we allow the enemies to have the full frontside control for free we could have pressured the enemies a bit more into CT. Maybe we could have used the Cypher for some bait. I don't know. But we actually won the round, so whatever. Let's go. Okay, listen. Uh, if you're already on Ascent, decide to push the A site against the enemy killjoy that has the ultimate. You need to have some kind of a counter for that ultimate. Like, the counter can be anything. It can be a Sov ultimate. Brimstone ultimate, pushing the enemies in the garden and taking the full garden and short control, but always keep that at the back of your mind. You see the killjoy with the ultimate on the defender side. Find a counter. Once the blast. What is that smoke on the rafters, man? Listen, bro. Put that smoke a bit deeper. You're giving way too much space to the enemies and allowing the enemies to hide way too much down here. You do either this smoke or if you have time, you can do a one-way smoke as well. It is not bad in some case scenarios. That's way too high, like it should be lower, obviously. Uh, now, when you're pushing the A main area of the map fast, I would recommend you, if your teammates are already swinging this like a monkey, Jump spot the enemies, get the info, and then peek the enemies. And when you're pushing through the A main area of the map, please clear the vines. Your teammates will not clear the vines. Clear every little position where the enemies can hide, and your that your teammates potentially might not clear for you. Okay. <clears throat> so, here he should have used the smoke, then the paranoia, clear the vines, go into side with your allies, and that's it. But you can also kill the enemies, I guess. I love, I love, I love how his jet is the third player to enter the site. Incredible. And whenever you're closing the doors and the doors are getting closed, keep your crosser at the short, keep your crosser at the smoke, someone is gonna peek it. Maybe, I don't know. I, uh... <coughs> okay, guys, they have Kuju, we'll be careful. One enemy remaining. Okay. Kevin. Get out of my way! Another one there. Okay. I'm still on B. Reloading. Uh, listen, uh, pay attention. Sweet, good night, man. Good night, good night. Uh, pay attention to what your teammates are doing. On ascent, if you have two or more teammates pushing through the mid area of the map, you always need to give them a short smoke or the bottom mid smoke. Cookie Ninja, take out for the prime game, is some man, and thank you for scamming Jeff Bezos. So, Listen, you have two plus teammates. You're either giving this smoke or this smoke. Then we are pushing with our KO. Aha, Jet got a kill here. We got a kill here. Instantly doing a smoke there. Paranoia on site for the brimstone. Taking the kill in the brimstone. Your utility user needs to be faster, better. Look at the minimap. Follow the indicators. You know? Watch the videos that I've shared with you. Come on, man. Brimstone on B. Nice. Faith. On HP. Faith mid. And in a post plant, always play as aggressive as your teammates are playing. 
um, just make sure that you have some kind of a safety for yourself and that you can safely refrag them. So here, for example, if three of your teammates are hunting the kills, go with them. You can easily use a paranoia to to uh, support them and to take some easy kills. The less numbers and the less men we lose here, our economy is going to get better. We enemies are not building the ultimate for the future rounds, and that's it. Cool. Both men. And also, one more tip. Uh, put the spike, plant, and equip the spike on two different buttons. So, I have equipped spike on 4, and I'm planting the spike on F. So, th this, type shit, so this type of shit is not happening for you. Like right now, he's trying to drop the spike to the KO, but he cannot drop it because he's on the site, and he has the same button for planting the spike and dropping the spike. I think if you have the same button, you can start planting the spike and drop and press the drop key and you're gonna drop the spike, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, why complicate things? Just have two different buttons for equipping the spike and diffusing planting the spike, you know. Shadows traveling. Left side mid. L listen, uh, when you're pushing, you know, Omen smokes, usually, you can jump and equip, you can do that as well, yeah, of course. Uh, but why complicate things, just have two different buttons, fuck it. Listen, when you do this smoke with Omen, usually that smoke will have some kind of a gap here. So if you're pushing through the short, check the gap, and then clear the short, and the rest of, spike. Of, spike. of the map. Oh that is the gap, you know. New spike. Oh spike down, mid. Okay, listen, also how you were clearing the short area of the map is not good. Look at this. So, this is what I would have done if I was you. So, we're taking the mid control. You want to clear the short, etc., etc. We did this smoke here. Bam. We're pushing through the short. Crosshair there. Checking that gap there. Aha, uh -huh, enemy is not there. Moving away from the wall. Getting up on this ledge. Jiggle peek in. Jiggle peek in. Moving in here. Checking that spot. Checking this spot. We can go jiggle in here. Check that off angle. And then, you know. I don't know what you want to do and how much you want to clear this position. So, just make sure to clear this spot uh, after you clear this. You know, maybe you can just do this and then focus on rest of the short. There's always some kind of a stupid gap, like... Unfortunately, you cannot... I mean, you can do a smoke like this. Yeah, you, you can just do a smoke like this on mid. It's, it's okay, it's not really the best smoke ever, but... It's still good enough. Are we blind? Anyways, I, I I really don't know, like... I really feel that in this elo, a bit more simplified gameplay, with clean executes and clear clear guidance, works much better than what they are trying to do. This... Uh, Precision of the smokes is very important. Done. Like, I can already see that these smokes have millions of gaps. And please, if your teammates are already executing a site, use your paranoia for that execute, you know. You don't really know if enemies maybe stack the site. Where the fuck are the enemies? Flash the back site. Flash the boathouse, speedway, stairs, you know. From stone kitchen. From the B main area of the map. Okay. The absolutely best post plant spike position on the B set is here. Why there? I see the spike from the speedway. I see the spike from the stairs. 
I can fight for the spike from the both house. From the site. I can do a one-way smoke. From the speedway and stairs. Enemies cannot defuse the spike. Plant the spike there. If you have an option to plant it. Just play safe. They're gonna OC breach. They're gonna use breach over here. Are you ready for it? I mean, if they breach over, I want you to block. And the best postman position on the B site is on top of the green boxes. Easy peek on the contact between enemies and your teammates. Get a kill. You can hide here, hold this. Your teammates are fighting the enemies on the speedway. Bam. Easy kill. From this angle, we can hold the speedway, take an easy kill, drop down, reposition for the second enemy. Learn how to play around the boxes. You should do this on both attackers and defender side if you're left alone on the B set on defense. Blind CT. Ooh, blind, blind, blind now. One enemy remaining. Okay. Listen, uh, that smoke there doesn't exist in any playbook and in any world. I mean, I said that, that you know, that play there that he's going for, it's okay if your five man pushes are not working or if you're playing some kind of an equal hull by round. But when you're going to teleport on the right side, you need to basically like uh, position this smoke a bit more towards yourself. Like you want to do it like this. Cover going out. And to teleport into this corner. And then from this corner, you know, fight the enemies and pick the enemies. Or, you know, just fight the enemies here, etc, etc. Try, when you're doing this smoke, try to position it like this. But this type of a play, you want to do, I don't know, like, once in three matches, basically. If you didn't try every other play that we have in the playbook, this should be like your last resort. You should run. Reloading. Just go. Just Very go. good. We, we, we killed your base at the ultimate. This, this was so retarded. Oh, I don't. It's broke. Match point. I saw their desperation. Let's use that. Reyna's broke. Hilter is broke. Just a second. Load him. Okay. Just have the spike. Help me. Uh, help me. I don't have dash, nice. Help me, uh, help me, uh -huh. don't let me die, don't, please don't let me die, please don't let me die, please don't let me die. Uh, also, you know, pay attention that enemies could have pushed the aim in. Uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, fuck. Chat, push B. Listen, guys, uh, when it comes to one very crucial mistake in this round, on the attacker's side, uh, watch my previous WOD review that I did on the stream. Like, it is the WOD review number 71 on my YouTube channel, second YouTube channel. Uh, and in that WOD, I explained when is the defaulting good in Valorant, and when are the rotations on the attacker's side actually good. That is the mistake they made in this round, like, I really... It's already two and a half hours into the VOD, like, I cannot repeat myself. Okay. <sighs> On the attacker side of that VOD, I explained, and they made that mistake here. Traveling. Okay. We can win this. Close the doors. That Listen, man, close the doors and then play the There spike. was a trap, I was detained and I couldn't... Could. Bro, is, 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 is this Austrian painter? In his team? Jawohl! Schneller! You didn't hit her once? We didn't close the doors. 80 jets. Cover going out. Okay. Okay. 
Listen, the solution for this round you will find in the 71st VOD review that I did on my second YouTube channel. Now let's see the last round. Where's my Stay in sight. Kill you here. Never going out. Camera taken out. Shadows traveling. My ultimate ready. We don't have to go yet. The reels too. Just check us. Okay. Let's make an agreement. A deal. A pact. Uh, if you are close to the smoke or close to the wall don't spam through that smoke because it is easier for the enemies to kill you than for you to kill the enemies unless you know exactly the location of the enemies or enemies are revealed like if the distance between you smoke and enemy is not working in your favor like you're closer to that shit it's much easier for the enemies to kill you so spamming through the smoke like this is usually a suicide and a death sentence. But on the other side, doing this type of a spam can result in some easy kills. Why don't you drop spike and TP somewhere? Drop the spike. That's true. Target sighted me. There. Reach. Jet pushing A main now. She's overconfident, she will push. What? Them what? <laughs> Enemy killjoy has a lineup for that. Respect, bro, respect. Okay. Uh, when some kind of a shit like this happens to you, like, uh, you know, right now, your Cypher died uh, by the aim and push. Unfortunately, th the best idea in this round right now is to try to find that jet with the rest of your team and uh, uh, clear your back. Reset the round a bit, take it a bit slower. And then we can decide whether we want to hit A or B. Because right now enemies have so much information, you know, about you that you are going B. That right now when you're hitting the B side, there can be like four enemies sitting on the site. And uh, this is probably the round where you should go for some kind of an aggressive play. Because we're already in a bit of a numbers disadvantage. And, you know, you can go for some more risky Do shit. Let's go, 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 we have to go now. TP somewhere, Omen, last round, dude. Come on. Ah, oh, they're out. One side, one side. Oh, a low tree side. Last player standing. Ten seconds left. Okay, my, my G. I think we discussed enormous amount of things in this VOD review. I really don't want to take this world review into the fourth hour. Uh, once you watch this VOD, once you watch the videos that I'm going to share with you, once you watch the training that I want you to do, I'm going to answer on all of your questions through the private DMs. And we'll keep in touch and we'll see, you know, what I can do more for you. I really want you to focus on a bit smarter fights. Pay attention to your utility. You're playing Omen. You can... All of these fights you can take in a bit better and smarter way. You know, flashing the enemies go for the peak. Using Shrouded Steps a bit more. Changing your positions on a defender side based on what the enemies are doing based on where the enemies saw you. Using on a defender side a bit more aggro setups to take the aim and beam and control and to support your teammates to compensate their mistakes. On a defender side, like uh, pay attention to the minimap where your teammates are, use a paranoia for them, flash the enemies, take an easy kill, win the round. Uh, your teammates are going for the retake, be ready for the re retake, look at the minimap, bam, smoke, paranoia, support them. On the attacker side, simplify your gameplay a bit more on Ascent, test the enemies first on A, then on me, then on B side. Uh, if you're playing an eco hal by round, go for some aggressive play, aggressive outplay, try to punish one enemy, trade yourself for a kill, or open the side for your teammates. 
uh, in the first round on the attacker side try to push something as five don't split the map split apart uh, buy in the first buy round on the attacker side by the classic Lysha utility like what the fuck are you doing with a classic and two smokes uh, in the first round you always want to go for some kind of an aggressive play outplay the enemies push the site together with your duelist open the site with your duelist uh, when you're in the numbers disadvantage or economy disadvantage call for the five man push I mean go for a more risky place aggressive place try to do something proactive uh, if you have numbers advantage, respect that numbers advantage. Play with your teammates on the refresh. Connect with your teammates a bit better. You're not connecting with your teammates that have higher chances of dying and that are probably going to die first. A lot of your problems also come from your minimap unawareness. And we're also going to try to fix that through some kind of a training. Mechanical skill is like 50-50. Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. A bit of the cross replacement problems. Uh, a bit of the reaction time problems and static aim problems flicking essentially i'm gonna share with you some kind of a training that i want you to do for the next two months other than that keep doing what you do i mean don't don't, keep, don't do what you're doing on read the enemies a bit more like you're not putting any focus onto the enemies you're only focusing on yourself you're not even focusing on your teammates as well you're only focusing on yourself I know that you're currently in the stage where you're learning the setups, you're learning the smokes, one ways, etc, etc. But you need to focus more on the overall match, man. If you want to have higher chance, chances of winning these games. And if the enemies are equal and halber on the defender side, push something as 5. And usually on Ascent you want to push A set, you know, no, no, play default, bro. Done. I, I think we're done with this one. Uh, make sure to subscribe, leave a like. Join my Discord server for coaching. You can also get free coaching through the uh, giveaways that I'm doing on every new 50 Twitch subs. Uh, and uh, that's kind of it. I have nothing else to say. All good. Mwah. I'm dead, man. <laughs>